and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, children of all ages, get your cocktails ready. We're going to start the countdown in just under 30 seconds. a little ordinary? Is it lacking something awesome? Well, head out to your local liquor store and, and pick, pick up something extraordinary. extraordinary. Grab a bottle of Old Umble Straight Whiskey or Old Umble Special Reserve. They're clean, smooth, easy drinking whiskeys that taste the way whiskey should taste. From humble beginnings to an extraordinary finish, Old Umble Whiskeys are what your bar needs today. Walk tall, be awesome, and, and drink humble. Old Umble Straight Whiskey and Old Umble Special Reserve. Get yours today. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, children of all ages, get yours today indeed. Welcome to the Old Humble Distilling Company's Whiskey Wednesday Happy Hour. You may notice uh, a new icon down here at the bottom left hand of my screen. It is the reminder for people to indeed subscribe to get us to our thousand subscribers we are at where are we at 766 and when we get to our goal of a thousand I will be fighting it I'll be fighting a kangaroo uh, we get there we'll get there we'll get there in due time the goal is to get there by the end of the year at this point uh, we've hit our views goal of a hundred thousand views uh, the first views goal of 60,000 the second views goal of a hundred thousand uh, we're now on to a views goal of 100,000 views in a month our high water mark is 65,000 views in a month um, our little uh, 100,000 views pr uh, project has been going quite well. I'm very pleased with the project. Um, but we're going to have our opening shot right now. Our opening shot is our Old Humble Double Oak Rye. Uh, these are new 1.75 ounce uh, shot glasses that we just got in the mail. Uh, we just got them in the mail. Look at that. Logo. Whiskey. It is... Uh, del uh, a, a delight to the eyes. This was our old shot glasses. Uh, they were blue tinted. Uh, they were a little bit smaller, but uh, these new ones are very nice. I like them. And they make delicious whiskey taste deliciously. Um, so housekeeping stuff. We're on. We're, we're going on with our hundred thousand views. Our next shot is our next goal is hundred thousand views in a month. High watermark so far is, is 65,000, uh, and that was last month. We're looking to blow that out of the water this month and keep going for it. Um, and, and very, very shortly, in the next two weeks, we will have a new uh, Day in the Life video, uh, actual edited video content, between 15 and 30 minutes uh, that I'm going to upload. I'm working on that edit in, on, uh, in other places. Um, Last week, before the end of our last episode in August, it was our August 30, August 30th? How many days does August have? 30 or 31? Our August 30, 30th? How many days is in August? August 31st. Last Wednesday, I said if we hit 750 before I closed out the stream I would do something dumb the dumb thing I did was dye my beard blue because I'm an idiot 
Um, cheers, Corey. Welcome to the party, Corey. Welcome to the party, Mike McClune. Um, I said I'd do it, so I did it. So, um, dye your hair purple and get a mohawk. Uh, now, I can tell you, this does not look, it didn't look this blue in my mirror. It definitely looks much bluer on camera and on screen. It did not, now, the first iteration of it was very dark blue, and I washed that shit out. And I, but I did it again, it's much lighter blue now. I'm not going to keep it. <laughs> This is going to be gone. Uh, this is the only chance you're going to see with me with a blue beard. This is gone. And uh, as soon as the stream ends, I'm showering. This is out. This is gone. I'm, this is not sticking around. Um, <laughs> no question. Um, it's almost a lovely lilac. It is definitely, it's definitely blue. It's, it's a light. Uh, I should have my blue sunglasses, but I don't. They're in the other room. I think they're on the... Uh, Mantle above the fireplace. Anyway, what what other housekeeping do I have? Okay, so we we we're we're working on the hundred thousand views, uh, uh, for you know hundred thousand views in a month. That's the high water mark that I'm shooting to, uh, do a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, which hopefully will just be a byproduct of the views, uh, uh of the views. Oops, wrong wrong screen there. Uh, of the actual just, you know, getting the views and getting the viewers. Uh, you know, the whole market building exercise that I'm working on. Um, but we're also bringing our, our Friday nights live at the distillery are coming back. Uh, now that it's in the fall or we're approaching the fall, we're going to be open on uh, Fridays and Saturdays. And Friday nights, we're going to have live music, which means we'll be streaming live music on this channel right here starting September 20th. Uh, starting September 23rd, September 23rd. So two weeks from now, September 23rd, we will be resuming our live streaming music with a band. Well, a, a returning band, uh, returning champions. Um, uh, returning champions, same old circles will be joining us, uh, that Friday, uh, the next week, we have Tulane at the University of Houston uh, tailgating on September 30th. I need to get a band in that night uh, so we can have the game on inside and the band playing outside. Uh, and then October, oh, I, in fact, I have the perfect band I can do that night. Oh, and then October, we've got the University of Houston versus Memphis on the 7th and Mike Gallo playing the same time. Uh, and then the returning champion, Ryan Adam Wells, will be coming back to the distillery. So we're going to have streaming music uh, starting September 23rd and going forward from September 23rd to September 30th, October 7th, and October 14th uh, with two new groups, uh, two returning groups, uh, three new groups, one, two, uh, no, two new groups, uh, Mike Gallo and hopefully who I, who I can get for the 30th. Uh, and then um, returning champion Ryan Adam Wells uh, and Mike Gallo, a brand new uh, a brand new group coming to the shop. So we're going to have we're going to have a full lineup of music uh, at the distillery, uh, and and I've got more groups coming uh, going through the end of October and into November. We're going to have uh, a whole bunch of folks coming to join us for these shows. They'll be streaming right here. So if you want to catch a live concert, you want to sit in your house, have a cocktail, and listen to some music, we're here for you. We're here for you. You can, you can be a part of what's going on at the distillery from your own house, from wherever you are in the country. Uh, that's what we do for you. You are my people, and I like to open my doors to my people uh, so that we can all be a part of the party. Uh, so there you go. And speaking of being a part of the party, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, because the notification bell tells you when I go live in the middle of the day, uh, if you're just chilling out, you're, you're hanging out at work, I'm hanging out at work, I go live, I'm bottling whiskey, we're talking about current events and whatever the hell else is going on, just, you know, I, you know, I'm in your office, you're in my office, we're just chatting, we're just talking, we're talking back and forth, talking whiskey, talking, uh... I, I, yeah, I don't know what what all hell else we talk about. We talk about whiskey. We talk about 
uh, cocktails. We talk about building stuff. We talk about building businesses. We talk about community involvement, community development. We talk about all the stuff that's going on at the distillery, all the plans that we have for the distillery, all the plans we have for your stuff. We talk about wherever chat takes us. Uh, I mean, I'm perfectly happy to work in silence and let y'all just see what I do. Uh, I can't turn on the radio because if I turn on the radio, YouTube will take me off the, uh, they'll, they'll turn my stream off entirely. But I'm absolutely willing, uh, I, you know, I turn on the camera, we turn on the microphone, we talk. And you get to see what I do in a day, and, you know, we chat back and forth, and it's fun. Um, so there you go. That's all the housekeeping I got that I can think of. Uh, oh, of course, tomorrow night, uh, do we got safety docs in the Safety docs in the house. Uh, cheers, safety doc. Party on, Garth. Uh, tonight, tomorrow night, rather, we have trivia. And I, 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 I guess I can let y'all in on a little behind the scenes uh, wrangling that I'm thinking about in my own mind. We have trivia. The nature of our trivia is going to change uh, over the course of the next few weeks. We're going to have different questions, different styles, different, uh, different flows to the rounds. We're still going to have five rounds. There's still going to be prizes, uh, points, prizes, and our love and respect. Tomorrow night you get love and respect. Uh, oh, shit, I almost forgot. Um, this right here are, is that the one, uh, graphic for the show? I think that right there, we're giving this away. Uh, we're giving away our, our wheel of doom and fortune. We're spinning that wheel next week. Next week is September. I believe we are spinning that wheel on the 13th of September, uh, which is Tuesday. I will post up the times by Monday, the 12th. We'll either spin it on the 13th, maybe we'll do it during the show on the 14th. Maybe. I'm leaning towards the 13th. If we don't do it the 13th, we'll do it on the 20th. But we're definitely going to do it one of those two days. We're going to spin the Wheel of Doom and Glory. Uh, well, I, I think we're definitely going to do it on the one of those two days. I might do it on the 16th at the end of the week because we've got uh, the show on the 14th. Trivia on the 15th, so I may spin the wheel on the 16th. It will be next week when we spin the wheel of doom and glory. We will be giving away a sample of each of our whiskeys plus a sample of our Boomtown bourbon. If you haven't already gotten your name on the wheel of doom and glory, it sucks to be you. Uh, however, I am a benevolent overlord, and I will add names that show up in chat today. Names that show up in chat today. This is your last chance. So if you're watching, get your name in chat. Get your name in chat. I add it to the Wheel of Doom and Glory. We add it to the Wheel of Doom and Glory. Uh, and I spin that wheel next week. We spin the wheel next week. And somebody's going to get a golden box of... How the hell... How, do... How does Vanna White do this shit? There. There. A golden box of delicious samples of our... Uh, joyful brown water. Uh, so there you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, that is next week. We will have... Uh, died your nuts? I don't even... I don't even know. Uh, and now it's time to uh, get on with the... Uh, get on with the stuff that we're going to talk about today. Uh, today, as you can see from the graphic... Uh, ice, please... My lovely wife will be joining me with a couple of pieces of ice so that we can make a couple of delicious cocktails. You see from the graphic we're talking, we're doing the rum and coke, also known as, well, originally known as, or commonly known as, the Cuba Libre. Um, the rum and coke dates back to the late 1800s. Uh, the late 1800s was uh, Coca-Cola. Uh, was was popularized in the very late 1800s, 1888, if I'm not mistaken, 1885, 1888, I think is when the, the guy who invented Coke died. Um, he was addicted to morphine after the Civil War. He was injured, addicted to morphine, and was looking for an elixir that would get him off of morphine, and he came up with the Coca-Cola formula. The Coca-Cola formula was not the original cola, was not the original flavor, it wasn't the first cola flavor but it was the most popular cola flavor and it created this entire genre that we now know of as colas or the generic coke especially if you're in the south it's coke everything's coke uh, unless it's not coke and if it's not coke then it is specifically pepsi or dr pepper but everything else is coke uh but it it, it definitely created the cola 
uh, category of elixirs. Now, these elixirs definitely predated Coke, uh, Coca-Cola, but the guy who invented it, Pemberton, if I'm not mistaken, was his name. Uh, he was he was looking for something to get him off of the morphine that he was addicted to, and he came up with uh, Coca-Cola, the formula for Coca-Cola. Now, when the 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 drink that we know of as the rum and Coke uh, became the rum and Coke, thank you, my dear, my lovely wife, joining me with the ice. Kind of gray on the screen instead of blue. Oh, it's definitely blue on the screen. This is definitely blue on the screen. I guess it's just the way your screen looks. All right, so my pieces of ice are big and chonky. Uh, so, <laughs> rum and coke is, is is exactly what it is. It, the drink is the ingredients. It is specifically Bacardi rum. We'll go with a full shot of Bacardi. It is specifically Bacardi rum. Bacardi rum. I'm making two of these. A little bit more. Ooh, made a mess. Yeah, I spilt a little bit. Oops. Yeah, look at that ice melt. Spilt just a little bit. And of course, as the name suggests, did I, I showed the I showed the uh, ingredients there. It's Coke. As the ingredients suggest, it is rum. It is Coke. Now, it was introduced to the United States by way of Cuba in the late 1800s. Um, do you want one with a lime or without, baby? Yes. All right. My lovely wife is getting the Cuba Libra variant. So there you go. With the lime, without the lime. Rum and Coke, Cuba Libre. There you go, my love. Cheers. Thank you. Mwah. Um... And it was it was introduced originally. Oh, it's strong. Well, yeah, it's rum, and coke. It's strong. Great. Originally, as it was introduced, it was this uh, elixir that predated coke. Uh, elixir. It was a uh, you know sugar, water, bitters. Uh, it wasn't really bitter. Bitters, tonic, uh, c carbonated water, and and flavorings in the sugar water. It wasn't necessarily bitters. It was just flavorings. Uh, herbal flavorings and stuff like that. Kind of a homegrown type of tincture uh, that they had down in Cuba prior to... I should go ahead and take my sip, right? Prior to the introduction of Coke. Coke was introduced in Cuba in the, 18, uh, in the 1890s, uh, late 1890s and early 1900s. And the Cuba Libre was introduced to American soldiers during the Spanish-American War. It was, in fact, Teddy Roosevelt's favorite drink. Um, it was introduced to American soldiers uh, during the uh, uh, Spanish-American War when American soldiers were fighting in Cuba and then brought back to the United States. Uh, Bacardi was, in fact, the rum used uh, with the Coke. Uh, there's a, uh, there was a 14-year-old boy who was present at the first pouring of Bacardi and Coke uh, it has an affidavit as a grown ass man, an affidavit in the 1960s, um, which you know confirmed the 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 origins of the rum and coke. But the rum and coke, the cocktail which we know of as the rum and coke, its origins predate the actual Coca Cola being introduced to Cuba. It became the rum and coke. the The Coca Cola replaced the syrupy mixture that was used in a rum and coke. So it comes. From the Caribbean states through Cuba, Coca-Cola is introduced to Cuba during the Spanish-American War in the early 1900s. In the early 1900s, it gets brought back to the United States, and the Cuba Libre, or rum and coke, as it is also known. I'm not a big fan, generally, of garnish, and garnish is what makes the Cuba Libre a Cuba Libre. The lime makes it a Cuba Libre. I'm not a big fan of garnish in general. I don't like garnishes because there's just... It's like raisins in your trail mix. You're just putting obstacles in the way of uh, M&Ms. Why would you do that? I don't know, but I don't, I'm, I'm not a big fan. I don't want... Look, I had to go to the store. Check this out. I wanted one lime. I wanted one lime. They told me it is five for a dollar. I'm like, I just want one. Can I just have one? They said it's five for a dollar. I'm like, but I just need one. 
So now I have four more limes that I'm just going to throw in the trash. I have four slices of, five slices of lime here that I'm not going to use. They're just going to get thrown in the trash. I'm going to use one more of these for a margarita. But now I have limes. I don't like garnishes. I don't want to go to the store and get one goddamn lime just to make a drink. But, you know, whatever. They have garnishes laying around. You got to go get celery to make yourself a, 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 a Bloody Mary. You got to get, you know, all the all the crap and, and nonsensical trash to make yourself a, a, a cocktail. That's one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan in general of cocktails. Uh, I don't want to have to go and buy fruit to make a drink. I just want to pour a drink, have a drink, just relax, have a drink. I don't need to mix stuff in with my beer. I don't need to mix stuff in with my whiskey. I don't need to mix stuff in with my scotch. I have ice. I have scotch. I have a drink. That's it. That's everything I need right there. I don't need fruits. I don't need, uh, parsley. I don't need, um, olives or lemons or, or whatever nonsense. I mean, I could get lemon juice, lemon juice. That's fine. I'm perfectly happy with lemon juice, lime juice, Perfectly happy with the juice. Juices you can do stuff with, but the actual fruit, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and eat a lime. Some people do that. I'm not going to sit here and eat a lime. So anyway, all that said, the rum and coke, uh, also known as the Cuba Libre, if you put a lime in it, um, Teddy Roosevelt's favorite drink, introduced to the United States in the early 1900s, shortly after the uh, uh, explosion of the Maine and during the Spanish-American War. Um, or shortly after the Spanish American War, it is one of it is, and it is not a a a. It's not technically a classic. Hang on, let me re, let me see if I phrase this properly. It's not a cocktail the way we think of cocktails, where it's the alcohol, the mixer, and uh, uh, a flavor, right? But if you really think about it, that's exactly what Coca Cola is. It is a mixer. It is water, sugar, it's carbonated water, sugar, and uh, herbal flavorings, which is basically a bitters. Uh, so if you got sugar, water, sugar, water, and bitters, they just add a little bit of carbonation to it. And you've got yourself basically a rum-based old-fashioned, uh, which is whiskey, sugar, water. That's it. That's your, and bitters. There you go. That's your old-fashioned. Whiskey, sugar, water, bitters. Rum, sugar, water, and flavoring, bitters, that, you know, not actual bitters, but bitters. So there you go. Basic drink, delightful enough to, to drink. Uh, if you like rum, I think rum's a little bit sweet for my fla my taste palate. But, you know, you can drink one of these things all damn night. And you can get really tore up on it, too, because the Coke has a really strong flavor. The rum has a really light flavor. Um, and you can get yourself tore up on one of these. So... Smart move to drink these standing up. <laughs> it is often seen with an umbrella. It is an umbrella drink. Um, it's not a frozen umbrella drink, a, a slushy umbrella drink, but it is certainly an umbrella drink, especially if you throw in the lime. Uh, you know, Cuba Libres with umbrellas. I mean, who wouldn't have that, right? Um, but again, more trash to put under your drink, stuff to throw away. Give me, give me, give me the cocktail. Just give me, give me the cocktail. Don't, you don't need to fancy it up. You don't need to put a dress on. You don't need to give a lipstick. I'm taking it home. It's fine. We've already, I've already said yes. You don't have to convince me uh, with the presentation. It's fine. No, no need for uh, you know all the accoutrements. I'm happy with this exactly as it is shown right there. Glass, ice, drink. Uh, so there you go, and that's one of the glory. That's one of the great things about rum and coke. Even a bad bartender can mix a good rum and coke because all it is, I mean, the drink is the recipe. And nobody's going to say, "Well, how do I make a rum and coke?" If they say, "How do I make a rum and coke?" they should not be behind a bar. Um, so, you know, it, it all it 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 as far as a classic cocktail goes. I mean, you should you should have rum in your bar anyway. Uh, I wasn't sure I had rum. I went and dug around in the back of my bar. Sure enough, I not only had, uh, not only did I have white rum, but I also had some spiced rum as well. Spiced rum simply being rum that's been, well, aged in a barrel and spices added. That's it. Um, basic bar. You can see by the by by what's left in those bottles. I don't drink rum very often. Those bottles are probably. Uh, 
probably uh, probably a they're probably as old as my marriage. They're probably in their, almost certainly in their 20s. Almost certainly. Uh, we've had them for a long time. At the very least, they're old enough to drive. They may not be, they may not be old enough to drink, but they're definitely old enough to drive. Probably old enough to vote. Uh, because I just don't drink rum that, that often. Uh, but there you go. Cuba Libre or rum and coke. Classic cocktail. Comes from Cuba. Uh, uh, heritage being of unknown origins. But certainly the drink that we know of as the rum and coke predates the existence of Coca-Cola in Cuba. Uh, the mixer that was used to make uh, the original the original cocktail doesn't really have a name. Um, because it wasn't rum and coke. It was rum and whatever, sugar water. Um, the original elixir doesn't really have a name, but that original elixir, the mixer that was made with the rum was replaced eventually with coke in the very, very late, uh, or I guess the very early 1900s when coke was for, uh, first distributed in Cuba. Uh, the replacement of uh, that homegrown sugar water mixture with coke brought it back to the United States, and in the United States, uh, in the early first couple of decades in the uh, 1900s, it just took off, and it was a very, very, very popular drink. It did not coexist with the original Old Fashions in the late uh, 1880s and the 1890s in the United States. Old Fashions predate the rum and coke, but the rum and coke was definitely introduced into the United States Right around the same time, uh, just before World War One, right around World War One. So there you go. The history of the rum and coke in the United States. The history of the Cuba Libre, uh, as introduced from uh, Cuba and brought all the way into your living room, or probably not your living room, I don't know, your bathroom, I don't know where you watch YouTube, uh, into your living room and into my office here and you know very soon one of these days i'm gonna have to clean this damn office out because it's i mean this is this is a cluttered up mess this is a cluttered up this is a cluttered up mess you can't see this cluttered up mess that's over here but this rolling rolling top desk needs to be cleaned up so that i can you know get all those papers out of there and, and filed away properly uh is ting ting back in the house ting ting's back in the house cheers ting ting good good to see you as well uh, and the goddamn bacon's in the house. Cheers, bacon. Uh, so there you go. I'm going to now make the transition. It is 1030. Um, we'll make the transition. We'll open up chat. And I will launch the discussion in chat with uh, a hat tip to the, to the, the historically uh, the, the original rednecks. Uh, so it's Labor Day week. Labor Day was just uh, two days ago, Monday, uh, and we are at the 101st anniversary of the Blair Mountain, the Battle of Blair Mountain. The Battle of Blair Mountain was a coal miners' rebellion against uh, against the coal miners, uh, the the coal coal mine operators, rather, uh, in Appalachia and in West Virginia. The Battle of Blair Mountain was literally an uprising of uh, coal miners. 10,000, 13,000 coal miners uh, in open rebellion against, uh, it was a coal miner strike, uh, a general strike among the coal miners. They fought back against the coal mine operators. The coal mine operators brought in private security guards to break the Union. Uh, the private security guards not only shot at the Union uh, coal miners, but they also hired private planes and dropped unexploded ordnance from World War One, uh, including chemical weapons, uh, mustard gas and uh, chlorine gas bombs. Uh, dropped those on the striking mine workers in order to break the union and uh, uh, bust up the strike. Uh, after several days of fighting, several days of fighting. Mind you, like 30 days. It, it, this went on for a very long time. On September 2nd, uh, the feds came in with 13, 
uh, no, not 13, 27,000 men. The feds came in with 27,000 men and put an end to this shit. Uh, that was their specific mission. It was written out, put an end to this shit. Uh, the feds came in, put it into the rebellion, put arrested like a thousand, uh, a thousand coal miners, arrested a few of the, uh, uh, security guards on the mine operator side. Most everybody got a, a kind of a short jail time slap on the wrist, broke the union operators, uh, but it was the uh, first major, um, first, I, I think it, I think they consider it to be the first major victory. Um, but it was a big deal for the union, for the union guys. I mean, they, they put down the rebellion, put down the, the strike, put down, but, but the uh, striking coal workers made their point. They showed their power, they showed their force, they showed what they could do. Now, one of the ways, you know, because everybody's covered in, in coal dust, everybody's from the same area. They're 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 all neighbors, and they're they're all in the same like. One of the ways that they identified themselves as uh, union coal mine workers was by wearing a red bandana around their neck, hence the name rednecks. That's how they were referred to, and redneck was the term used to refer to union. Uh, uh, union members, striking union members, union members, active union members, union activists, uh, especially in the coal mines all the way up and down through Appalachia, but also uh, union workers in solidarity with the coal miners throughout uh, the rail yards and steel plants and uh, manufacturing floors all across the country at the, at the time from the uh, early teens all the way through uh, the mid to late 40s, and these were the people that built the middle class and built the United States that we that we read about the post-war boom, the the, the United States we read about that gave us uh, the, the 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 labor freedoms and the work conditions that we enjoy today. Uh, so I thought it was at, at least this week. Uh, at least a very important time to give a hat tip and an acknowledgement to the rednecks that came before us who made it, who, uh, you know, made it possible for us to have uh, a Labor Day. And it just so happens that Labor Day, being the 1st of September, kind of commemorates that very action, not kind of, it commemorates that very action, that very event that happened going all the way through September 2nd of 2000, or 1921. The... Battle of Blair. It, it was the first time. Uh, no, it wasn't the first time. It was one of the first times that bombs were dropped on uh, civilians in the United States. It wasn't the first time. It was, uh, I think, it was the second or third time that bombs were dropped on American civilians in the United States. Uh, the first time being in Tulsa. That I think the first time was in Tulsa. It was probably happened before Tulsa, too. But anyway, we'll open up the chat now. It's time to open it up to chat. I'm going to, uh, where are we at? Uh, 10.34. It, is an, it might be an early night. Uh, and mind you, I have got to, before I go to bed, i got to shower this shit off my face. Um, the, the feds would have done, Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll come back to that. All right, all the way back up to the beginning of chat because I don't think I paid much attention to chat early on. Let's open up the chat page. Uh, should we do a word from our sponsor now? No, we'll go ahead and go straight to chat. We'll just keep we'll we'll keep the party rolling. Um, and I might pour myself another cocktail in just a minute. Um, see, the thing about rum and cokes is the more you drink them, the less you worry about the sweetness. Uh, the second one tastes better than the first one. The third one tastes better than the second one. And on and on and on. Uh, to the point where you're just like, just drinking them down. It tastes more and more Coke. Of course, a lot of sketchy-ass bartenders will continue to add more Coke and less rum to each consecutive drink because they're dicks. But uh, since I'm my own bartender, that's unlikely to happen. All right. There's the... All right, let's roll. Let's roll, guys. All right. Corey's in the house, says, uh, you know what? I need to get, I probably ought to get a piece of paper and read the name, or write the names as I get through the names so that I don't lose the names. Uh, so we have Mike McClune. Corey Slater. I'll make sure we get all the names in. Don't worry. 
Um, more of a lavender. This is definitely a blue. It is not lavender at all. But yeah, when I first slapped it on here, I laid it on really thick, and it was a very purpley blue. It was very mm, hard to look at. Safety docks in the house. Uh, make sure you get your name on the wheel. Um, look into public domain music. I have... Oh, you no, know, no, no. I have plenty of public domain music. I just can't put public domain music on the radio. Because uh, usually when I'm in the distillery, when I'm working in the distillery, I just have the uh, uh, I just have the radio on, and I'm just blasting music and listening. Sometimes I'll listen to a podcast, but it gets kind of loud in the shop, and I can't really hear the podcast. But I can turn the radio up as loud as I need to turn it up. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll crank out the music loudly, uh, but I can't do that while I am. Uh, I can't crank out the music while. I am uh, uh, streaming because, uh, well, because of copyright stuff. I can't play radio music because all the radio music is licensed and copyrighted. Uh, so that's, you know, that's why uh, when I'm streaming, I'm, I'm, I'm usually just babbling, talking about nonsensical whatever. Um, for to being on the channel the week of September 1924, looks good at them. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's right. Um, I'm, I will have you, well, yeah, I, I may be able to get guests. Um, the challenge that I'm having right now with getting guests is having a good, uh, good software link with the Zoom. It seems to be pretty stable with Lisa on, on Thursday nights. Um, but I think if I bring a guest on, on Wednesday nights, if I bring a guest on for our show Wednesday night, I think I'll be good because I don't have, um, I don't have as much, yeah, we should be good, we should be good, we should be good, because I can, I can limit the stuff that's going on on the, uh, on the screens and all the stuff on, uh, Wednesday nights. We'll make it work, my man. We will make it work. Uh, because that's what I do. I make shit work. Uh, I just make it work. Uh, so there you go. Um, uh, you dyed your goatee green when you were in college. I have never, ever, ever, until now, dyed my beard any color at all. This is the first time I've ever dyed my beard uh, at all. And it's, I hate it. I hate it. Here's the thing. I hate blue food color. I don't like blue food coloring. I don't like blue icing. I don't like blue drinks. I don't like, I don't like, I like the color blue, but I don't like to eat blue food. I don't like blue food. I don't like blue dyes. I don't like blue ink. I don't like blue, uh, pins. I, I write with black ink. I don't like blue. Uh, I don't like blue outside of the color, blue, like the color blue down below. You see that down there? My logo is blue. My logo up here, it's blue. I like the color blue, but I don't like it touching me. And this, this was an act of like extreme just will of doing it. And I was like, oh, oh, I hated every second of it. Like putting my fingers in the, the goop and, and rubbing it. Oh, I hated every second of it. Absolutely every second of it. Uh, and, it and, and, and it's like a cream. Hang on, I'm going to see if I can get my lovely wife to bring me the... Uh, uh, can you bring me the dye off the bathroom counter. Uh, I'm see if maybe she'll bring it to me. It is it's it's well I'll I'll show it to you in a second. We'll 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 come back to it. Um Gray doesn't take the dye well. Gray <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's like great nuts. Yuck. Uh Solitude Surfer is in the house. You get uh Added to the list. Hurrah. I'm sure I've missed a shit ton of names, too. Um, 
I'm sure I've forgotten to upload names. I just give everybody another slice of the pie. Um, let's see here. Queens University, Kingston, an engineer. <laughs> I want to go full purple. Did you have your... <laughs> no ting ting. This is uh, last week, during the show last week, I said, if we hit 750 before the end of the show, I'll dye my beard blue. There we go. We hit... Uh, we hit... 750. We were at 748 when the show started. We hit 750 at, by the end of the show. By the end of the show, I uh, I said I'd do it, so I did it. There you go. Uh, this will be gone before I hit the my, uh, my head hits the pillow tonight. Uh, is is like it's not really dying my fingers blue when I actually it is. It's dying my fingers blue when I you can't really see that. Hang on, let me see if I can. Can I do it? Can you see that? My fingers are getting... It's it's very... A weak dye. A very weak dye. I'm hating... I'm absolutely hating every second of this. I am absolutely, positively, 100% hating every second of this. But I did it for you people. Yeah. Um, Sailor Jerry Spiced Rum and Root Beer. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. Rum and Coke can be made with Dr. Pepper, root beer, Pepsi, Diet Coke. Uh, you know, Coke is the uh, Coke was the original, like, mixer to go with the rum, but it's now just a generic. You can, I mean, uh, bars, they just have cola. Whatever the syrup is. Um, and they don't care. They don't even ask. Um, so there you go. Um Papa Smurf had a wonderful night. Top Shelf Dustin, cheers. I'm going to get all the shit for this. Nice review, by the way, Dustin, of what you posted up today with the uh, uh, the Scotch review that you did. That was, that was, it was fun to listen to. I enjoyed that. Uh, bravo. I did like the, I did like the video. Uh, so there you go. And speaking of which, guys, uh, like this video while you're here. Go ahead and like it. Um, like and subscribe and do all the things that you're supposed to do and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm not, when it comes to that crap, I'm not a very good YouTuber. So just like, you know, because I make whiskey, not YouTubes. <laughs> YouTubes the side gig. Whiskey's the main gig. Um, so yeah, don't forget to do all that stuff. Like, subscribe, uh, notification bell. Tell your friends, share it, blah, 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 blah. Um, Dustin, hi to chat. Remember when you are out at the bar, specify Bacardi and Coke. Otherwise, they pour, oh yeah, they pour whatever, well, to be fair, to be completely fair, to be completely fair, Bacardi is cheap as shit. <laughs> I think that bottle's like, what, 10 bucks? Uh... I have no idea. Actually, I have no idea what Bacardi costs. This is a basics. Uh, basics. I mean, it's not bad rum. Don't get me wrong, but it is not. I think most. What McCormick's might be the well for most places. I think Bacardi's usually up on the shelf. Thank you, my dear. <sighs> Don't tell her, but I'm totally going to get this into her hair while she's sleeping. <laughs> so this is this is what this stuff is. Look, it's it's like it's it's a it's a cream. It's it's this blue waxy creamy shit. And it's let me turn the light off. Maybe I get a better. See? It's just like this blue waxy creamy shit and I, it looks like like, it looks like putty, but it, it is. It's just like this, this waxy type cream, and it, and it, I hate it. I, I, every second of smearing that shit on my, on my beard, I hate it. I absolutely hate it every second of it. And I'm not like, I, because it gets on my fingers, now I'm conscious of touching my face and touching my beard and, and 
I'm hating it. I'm hating life right now. I'm absolutely 100% hating life. Uh, 100%. But you're welcome. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I don't. Th- I, I think it's probably McCormick's rum or some other. I, I, honest to God, I have no idea what rum they put in the well. But I've never, I've never really explored the world of rum. Maybe that'd be something to do one day. Do a rum tasting of different rums. Compare them to Bacardi. I'm definitely not going to... Yeah, do... Yeah, maybe. Maybe that'd be something to do one day. Do a rum tasting. Get like five of those little sample bottles. The little 50 milliliter sample bottles from uh, the local uh, apothecary. And find out, you know, really try to compare them. Um, really try to compare them side by side and see see what all the hubbub is about, bub. All right, so that's my first. I'm not. I'm not gonna rush to my second one. I'll wait. All right, let's go on with chat. Let's carry on. Uh, it is 10:21 in chat. It is 10:47 in real life. Um. Beaten with a frozen fish for accidentally sp- spilling out the shelf. What? <laughs> what? I don't have any idea what that means. <laughs> um, Captain Bluebeard. That's me. That's damn right. Captain Bluebeard. Uh, goddamn bacon is in the house. One of the real ones. You with me? One of my ride or die guys, he's always here. Love you, brother. Thank you for showing up once again. Uh, it was another whiskey channel you might get. Oh, well, cool. Appreciate that. Uh, Lime Aid is good for a mix. You know, I was reading about. I was reading about Mountain Dew, and you know how Mountain Dew was originally invented to be a mixer for whiskey, but the original Mountain Dew mixer for whiskey was not the Mountain Dew that we have now. The original Mountain Dew mixer for whiskey was basically was basically just sugar water and tonic. Uh, I'm gonna dig into that. I'm gonna dig into that a little bit more, see if I can find out the true history of Mountain Dew Mixer, the original Mountain Dew Mixer. Uh, because when they changed it from uh, whatever it was, I think it was called Hillbilly uh, Hill, uh, I don't remember what it was called. I don't think it was called uh, I can't remember. Uh, but I, but I was listening uh, listening was I listening did I listen to that story? Or did I read that? I can't remember. If I, you know, I get my podcast and actual articles that I read mixed up all the time. Uh, so I can't remember if I read it or if I listened to it. But, um, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do a real original Mountain Dew mixer one day. Because I've done the Mountain Dew mixer where we drank, where I, I did Mountain Dew with whiskey and it tasted like shit. I hated it. It was gross. It was disgusting. Of course, I used Mountain Dew light. But Mountain Dew is, I, I find Mountain Dew just to be gross. Uh, but I did a Mountain Dew mix uh, on one of my cocktail corners, and it was dreadful. It was it was hard to drink. It was just awful. Um, also, uh, I did a Bloody Mary with, a, a, it was not a Bloody Mary, it was Bloody, uh, Bloody Mary with whiskey, which was a, like a Bloody Martha, I think. Bloody, uh, I can't remember. But that tastes like shit too. Don't do that. That's terrible. But maybe maybe that'll be next week's cocktail that we do. The the history of the Bloody Mary. That'd be a fun one. I'm gonna write that down. History of the Bloody Mary. Cause that's a good cocktail to have. Cause that's a that's yeah. That'd be it'd be interesting to find out the history of that thing. Anywho, okay, yeah. Uh, so people go to bars for cocktails because they don't keep that. Cra- yeah, I, I think that's a, that's probably the best reason to go to a. The best place to have a cocktail is to go to a bar and do it. But I can tell you, there's been more than one occasion when I've gone to a bar. And I've pulled up to the bar and I've sat down in a stool and I've looked at the bartender. And I've said, tell me what you have. What are your bourbons? And the bartender will turn around and she'll go, well, Usually that time of day, it's a she. Um, yeah, well, we've got 
Crown. We've got uh, Jack. No. We've got Jim. Yeah, Jim Beam's a bourbon. Good job. You got one out of three. That's a good start. Uh, we've got JMB. That's not a bourbon either. We've got Johnny Walker. That's not a bourbon either. Uh, we've got Wild Turkey. All right, so out of all of those that you named, you have two bourbons. <sighs> those people I don't trust to make cocktails. <laughs> I mean, unless the cocktail, the name of the cocktail is the recipe of the cocktail, rum and coke, whiskey, uh, soda, whiskey and water, whatever, whiskey on the rocks, whiskey, I'm certainly not going to tell them whiskey neat because they're not going to know what that means. Um, that gives, that, that, that lowers my confidence level when you ask them what they have and they tell you what they have and most of what they tell you that they have isn't what you ask for. Um, like what do you have in, uh, chicken sandwiches? Well, we have roast beef, we have ham. We have chicken. Uh, we have <laughs> eggs. <laughs> like that's not, only one of those is chicken. The one that is chicken is chicken. Jesus. Um, limeade and vodka. That actually sounds really good. That sounds like what we used to make called jungle juice. Uh, we made that in college. Uh, lemonade, limeade, and vodka. And we mixed it in five-gallon containers. And, uh, yeah, that was some good shit. That would put you, put you out. Uh, to steal the fruit you need from your neighbor's backyard. <laughs> None of my neighbors have lemon trees or, uh, lime trees, unfortunately. Uh, in our old neighborhood, we did have a loquat tree in, uh, in one of the public esplanades. Um, you'd eat a lime if you had one. I, ugh. Uh, yeah, not me. No, you're eating beer looking like a blueberry waffle and, <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, it's basic, uh, liquid bread, best kind, great minds, liquid breakfast is the best. Has anyone ever said what flavor cola is supposed to be? You know, I, I tried to find out what the original ingredients were were for Coke. And that is a closely guarded secret. Uh, the original formula for Coca-Cola, the existing, the current formula, whatever you want to call it, it is a state secret. It is a closely guarded secret. But, like root beer, sassafras, uh, sassafras root. Uh, Dr. Pepper is like five different or I'm sorry, 45 or 25, some, it's a, it's a bunch of different herbs and, and flavorings put together to make Dr. Pepper. Um, but yeah, that's all it is. It's just, uh, it's flavorings and it's like, does it say what the flavorings are? And certainly it doesn't. Surely not. Um, yeah, no, it doesn't. But, uh, that's, I mean, that's all it is. It's, it's, a combination of herbs and uh, flavorings, and that's it. That's that's what you get. Uh, you know, all that stuff comes together to make coke. You know, we all know that originally it had cocaine in it. Um, that's why they call it coke. Uh, but yeah, I, no, nobody really knows what the exact mixture to make Coca Cola is, because it is a closely held 135 year old secret. Um, first rum I ever bought, 26 years store picked rum, broke the bottle in the back of your car. Oh my God, Dustin, dude. Ouch. Yeah, that is, uh, that, that stings, brother, man. Okay, I'm going to make myself another drink. I will probably switch to whiskey, uh, soon, but one shot. Bacardi rum, boop, and I probably didn't put enough Coke in either one of our drinks because I still have, this is a 12 ounce Coke, I still have, what would it be, three, six, yeah, I still have some Coke left. All right. 
confused by the fruity smell of your of your rum bust busting in the back seat of your car. Yeah, I get that. Um, turns in ninety miles. That's that's your first mistake. There is taking the turns at ninety miles an hour. Um, never trust a sweet drink. They will fuck you up. I I don't I don't doubt it. I've I've been there. I know it. They they that that the sugary the sweetness the you know it, it it messes with your palate it messes with your mind the the the, the caffeine and the coke the 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 sugar in the uh, um the sugar in the mix and it's all just yeah it, it messes with you it really does it it helps to the the sugar's hydroscopic so it'll it'll dehydrate you faster uh than you would otherwise be dehydrated uh with just the alcohol it is a uh, yeah it's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of messed up shit that goes with the uh uh, sugary drinks. Uh, redefining dip shittery. I don't know what the fuck that means. Oh, dip shittery. I still I don't know what that means either. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what we were talking about at 1028. Um, you know what else is good? Spiced rum and ginger ale. Ooh. I have ginger ale. I have spiced rum. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna switch drinks tonight. Unless I switch to whiskey. I only ever switch to whiskey. I'm not going to switch to doing a different cocktail. If I'm going to do a different cocktail, I'm going to research that cocktail so I can talk about that cocktail intelligently. Uh, as opposed to the stuff that I do otherwise is just uh, babble incessantly uh, without any intelligence whatsoever. Um, <laughs> um, let's see here. What else we got? Um, was on an off-ramp, but freshly finished with no other cars. Uh, bacon vodka, ugh. bacon beer, ugh. I'm going to came up with my own mixes. My Manhattans and margaritas are essentially zero carbs. Ooh, that's a smart move. Uh, I do know somebody that made their own, uh, bitters. Celery bitters, uh, jalapeno bitters. I've got a, uh, three, three or four jars of that stuff in my, uh, spice cabinet. But uh, haven't used them for anything, so. Huh. But nobody else was near your bike. Look back from the tires and balancing, and wanted to feel the guy. That makes, dude. That makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, you have a you you get your you fresh tires, freshly balanced, and you just want to just let it rip. I mean, that makes perfect sense to me. I get that. I get that. Um. I'd do it too. <laughs> I brew your own kits uh, for making the beer. That makes sense. Um, worth a second shot. <laughs> um, let's keep going. A plus on the new paved road and the guys who picked my. Oh, well, there you go. F minus if we're getting at a 26 year old bottle of liquor in the back. <laughs> you know, you've got your, uh, you've got seat belts you could put, you could put on that stuff. Um, <laughs> were the Pinkertons, they, it was not the Pinkertons that were involved in, uh, the Battle of Blair Mountains. It was, uh, uh, two other security forces. It might've been the predecessors of the Pinkertons. Uh, but let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can get the uh, name of the uh, security forces that were used. Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency, along with the Logan County Sheriff's Department and West Virginia State Police. It was Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency that was brought in to uh, bust the Union and crack some skulls. Um, Steve Erpenbeck is in the house. Steve Erpenbeck. There was a, what movie did we watch last night? Night before last night. Ah, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway. Learned a few history items with the story. Oh, I'm glad you learned a few uh, history items there, uh, uh, Steve. 
Uh, no, Ting Ting. In fact, it had nothing to do with communism at all. Communism is a term that was used to smear the unions. Unions are not, in fact, communist. Unions are, in fact, socialist, which is not communist. Those are two very different things. And unions are very much a function and form of the capitalist world in which they grow up. It gives power to the workers that otherwise would be shot and had have bombs dropped on them by the capitalists, which you know pretty much would uh, rather work them for free. Uh, so no, Ting Ting, not at all communist, not at all. But nice try. Um, yeah, it was it was before communists. Well, no, did com did the Soviet Union exist? There were communists. It was it was. This was in the twenties when. The communist movements were very nascent, very uh, young, and 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 poorly poorly thought out and formed in the United States. Uh, labor movements and socialist movements, social movements, labor movements uh, were gathering steam and gathering force, uh, not only in the United States but also in Europe, especially in Europe. Um, and in fact, when the uh, when uh, the Great Depression hit and all of like all of the uh, economic order seized up because you know unregulated uh, unregulated capitalism tends to to fuck everything up, <laughs> which is kind of I mean the Feds did some 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 stupid dumb fuckery too that that exacerbated the whole the whole mess you know by 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 pulling money literally pulling money out of the economy when the economy was on the verge of collapsing they caused the collapse to be even worse um but uh uh there was a real risk there there really was uh, we don't appreciate how close the economic order that we know came that we know today came from being flipped upside down in the late 20s and early 30s. You know, I mean, people were like 25 to 30% of the population was completely out of work, unable to work at all because there was just no money. There was no money in the economy. Um, that gave that gave a lot of uh, a lot of power and a lot of influence to communist groups and who were who were advocating uh, for the the government to actually seize the means of production and then put people to work, but instead, what the government did is they put people to work directly. Uh, they 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 created the Civilian Conservation Corps uh, and put people. They had they had a resource that they they had available to them, which was people. So they said, okay, we're going to put people to work. We're going to put people in camps and we're going to put them to work put people in camps and put them to work. That sounds awfully uh, <laughs> awfully close to what another country did uh, in the mid to late 30s. But no, what they, what they did is, 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 you know, they built uh, dams and uh, recreation areas and national parks and national monuments. And they, they built, they, they put the people to work and basically created a federal workforce. They hired... They created a, a federal, they hired a bunch of unemployed people to work for the federal government. That, that's basically what the Civilian Conservation Corps was, um, and it was radical, uh, a radical idea at the time. But the alternative was to seize the factories and put people to work in the factories directly, and that would have that would have been that would not have been a capital a, 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 a capitalist socialist solution that would have been a communistic solution and it was definitely not the road that the uh that the the that the the people who owned property wanted to go down uh you certainly didn't want to turn your factories over. I and mean, if we had done that we probably wouldn't have been able to mobilize and uh uh well we may have been able to mobilize for world war ii but we certainly wouldn't have been able to sustain the uh the uh economic growth in the 50s and 60s that followed after with strong union jobs and strong middle class growth and strong manufacturing growth that literally produced the goods that we sent all around the world. Um, 
and rebuilt Europe. It was a, it was a, I don't think we really do appreciate how close we came to, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if we really do appreciate how close we came to, uh, the whole structure just dissolving under our feet. Uh, cause it, it, there was, there was a distinct two different paths that we could have taken at that point in time in, you know, the early thirties, somewhere in there. And we chose path A instead of path B. Uh, and pro I don't know, maybe if we had chosen path B, if we had gone down the, the C's, the means, it may have reverted back, but, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to, there's so many what ifs that would have happened after that, that it's hard to even imagine where it would have gone. But, uh, yeah, uh, there's other people who've done uh, the what if videos, and you can you can go down those rabbit holes all the goddamn night if you really want to. Um, <laughs> you know, share of drifting back again. Ninety one Q forty five loose steering wheel. Woo, Lord. The closest I've ever come to anything like that is when I. When I was in high school and I had my Mustang and I, I, I went flying down this road to go to a, a park and rec football field and I, I, it, was a, it was a field by the, uh, by the high school and the back parking lot was a gravel parking lot. I went down the road and I turned to go into the gravel parking lot and did a big rooster tail, just slipped. And then I just turned around and went to the parking spot. Uh, that was it. It was, uh, it was, that was good times mm, 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 mm. Ah. <laughs> he's in commies at capital i don't think they were commies <laughs> they were they were the other thing you know not commies you know there's there's commies and they're fascists they're, those aren't the same thing uh <laughs> commies and fascists are two very different things and they hate each other they hate each other a bunch which is uh, which is which is kind of funny, uh, because neither one of them knows what what the other actually is. <laughs> ah, Lord. Anyway, um, rum is cheaper than whiskey. Had to be rubbed with sticks back in the day. Rums <laughs> had to be rubbed with sticks. Uh, third general Mac, third generation Maxima is certainly capable of a controlled slide. Yeah, you, you, you gearheads. I don't know enough about cars to know any, any, anything about that shit. Um, local bartender Frank keeps pours consistent, drink to drink for regulars, and we take care. That is the best kind of bartender to have. The bartender where you know their name, they take good care of you, and you take good care of them. Those are the, my my first bartender. Every 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 guy remembers his first, right? My first bartender's name was Jack. Uh, Bill, Jack and Bill and Cat. They all worked in the same bar. Uh, Bill's dead. He died of I think pancreatic cancer back in '99. Jack is still around, uh, but he's not at the same bar. He's at a different bar, and I've kind of lost touch with him uh, over the last ten years or so. Uh, and Cat is no longer bartending. She uh, went off and got. Got married and uh, she got married to a guy that she hooked up with after we helped move her out of her apartment. Uh, that she uh, move out or move her out of the apartment that she lived in with uh, a dirt bag who was a creepy creep who scared the piss out of her and she didn't want to go back, so she had us go and take her stuff. But she is no longer bartending. Uh, I mean, shit, it's been 20 years. Uh, I don't know what she's doing now. I, I lost touch with her in 97, I think. Uh, that'd be 25 years. Good God. Ah, good stuff. Good times. Um, my girls used to make up for all I paid for when I took them. Uh, oh, Ting Ting. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, most foods are not naturally. That's right. Most foods are not. Blue does is not a naturally occurring 
color. There's very few animals that have blue dye in their feathers or fur. Uh, there's one butterfly, I think, that has naturally occurring blue coloring in its wings. Uh, all the other blue butterflies, other than that one, uh, they use a trick of light to create blue, but they don't, they're not actually blue. Blue is, ugh, this is, uh, you just brought it back to my attention. I'm looking at the, the, the monitor right now and I'm seeing it. It's just, ugh, and I know I've touched my face a few times. Now I'm all self-conscious about my fingers having blue tips on them. Ah, God, I'm hating life. The more, every time I think about it, just, and I'm worried about it, it dying the, the collar of my shirt. Ah, not my happiest moment right now. I was, I was good. I was in a zone. And then I started thinking about it. I'm looking at it. It's just, ah, it makes me, ah, got to get out of my head. Easy Street with Jen is in the house. Cheers, Jen. Welcome to the party. Easy Street with Jen added to the list. With Jen. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the party. Cheers. Um, God damn it. All right, let's talk about the beard again. Um, getting, speaking of the beard, I'm starting to get worried about that kangaroo. Dude, I'm going to fuck that kangaroo up. I'm going to fuck him up. I'm telling you, it, it's not even going to be like a long fight. All you got to do is go in there and just get one quick... Like, the kangaroo is not going to expect me to punch him. The kangaroo is not going to know what to expect. So it'll be all like, hi, kangaroo, what's up? Left shot, left jab, right hook, done. And that's it. And the kangaroo will be like, whoa, what the fuck? And he's going to back up. And then, like, I'm done. That's it. I, I got my shots in. He, we're done. He's going to be stunned. He's going to back up. He's going to get back on his uh, tail, get back on his legs. He's going to maybe take a shot, but I'm going to be out of range. And, the, you know, it'll be cool. It'll be a stalemate. That's it. And, uh, you know, uh, the judges can make the decision. There'll be no strikes on me, two strikes on him. I win 2-0. That's it. Fuck that kangaroo. Looking at my girl like that. I'm going to mess you up. <sighs> Thousand subs. I fight a kangaroo. 1,000 subs, fight a kangaroo. That's the goal. That's the goal by the end of the year. Fight a kangaroo. Straight up. Dude, I could do a hype video. Like, uh, see, I I sit here and I like I like think with, and now I'm going to get on my, I can't. I hate this. Anyway, uh, but I could do like a UFC hype video. Like uh, the old humble guy versus Jack the kangaroo, Jack the Roo. Jack the Rooper. Oh, that's the name. That's the name I'm going to give. Jack the Rooper. Undefeated in American mixed species bouts. And I'd be like, I'm on in my debut fight. That's, yeah. That I could do that video. <laughs> I could totally do that video. I could totally do that. Um, that's what it was. It was Kill Karen Twelve. Uh, there's another one. There's another one that's on my for you uh, for you page. There's another one that's showing up on my feed. Uh, that's a 25 year old Scotch, but I think that's an older video. Um, anyway. Um, uh, I'm not a very good viewer. I hit the like button before <laughs> before I know if I like it or not. <laughs> I always unlike or dislike. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, the same drifting out of a parking space. Uh, I'm not too far behind on chat. It's 1045 in chat. Oh, I'm still 30 minutes behind on chat. Never mind. Um, I go 375 direct on a sheet pan. Flip vertically. Oh, that's bacon. Uh, if It's Smurf <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be that much if it was jizz and if it was jizz it would be like on the glasses and up on the forehead and a, come on it's 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 almost certainly uh juices from uh uh from uh smurfette uh, <laughs> blue unicorn grease that's fair that that could be it could be that but it but it does it looks like it it does it looks like grease. That is it is like putty or grease. 
Or that, 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 that's very much what it looks like. It's, it's, uh, ugh, it itches. Just thinking about it makes it itch. Just like, uh, you know, when you watch a video of lice and your head starts itching, it's, you know, I look at that and it's like, oh, I don't want to scratch, but I want to get on my fingers. I just want to, I seriously, I could shower right now. If I had a bowl of water, I could just like wash it off, like as we speak, but then it would like drip down my shirt and that'd be gross. And I just touched my mic, which. Hello. <laughs> I really do like this microphone. <sighs> anyway, uh, beans, minestrone soup. Ooh, beans. Um, Bacardi is not top shelf for sure. Twelve to fifty. Yeah, it's it's. I I don't think it's top shelf, but I don't think it's well either. It's not expensive. It's certainly cheap. Uh, yeah, it's like on that. It's like when you're when you're at the bar. Bacardi's on the display rack behind you, behind the bartender. I don't think it's in the well, but I'm sure there are plenty of bars that have Bacardi in the well because it it's not that expensive. Um. Not at all. Uh, now, I can appreciate you guys baking, putting your bacon on a bacon sheet or a, a, a cookie sheet and baking it in the oven. But I, I, I personally, my, my own personal preference, maybe we should do a show on how to make the perfect strip of bacon in the two competing styles of bacon. That's not a live show. That's a, that's a recorded show. But see, the reason I like doing my bacon in, a, uh, in the skillet on the uh, on the uh, stovetop is because I'll use that bacon grease to make my scrambled eggs. That's the way you do it. Because uh, damn, scrambled eggs and bacon grease, oh, that is some flavorful eggs there, baby. Oh yeah, boy. But yeah, it definitely cooks well in uh, the oven, and it's flat. And it's crispy, and it's consistently cooked all the way through. Uh, but yeah, I'll cook it to death on the skillet because I like my bacon crispy. Uh, oh, God, just thinking about it makes my mouth water. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. <clears throat> Cracked again. Oh, yeah, baby. Give me that bacon. Oh, yeah. All right, enough of that shit. Sorry. <laughs> um, you're good with Mountain Dew and whiskey. Better was the weird lemonade Mountain Dew they have now. And run. yeah, see, I just don't like the flavor of Mountain Dew. I don't. I just don't like Mountain Dew. I just don't. Ugh, I just don't like it. Uh, Sunflowers is in the house. Cheers, Sunflower. Uh, that is a new name. Uh, play along. Sunflowers is in the house, uh, and uh, yeah, tomorrow night, 9 p.m., uh, trivia. Uh, you get on the list, uh, you win. <laughs> no, no, Sunflowers, I am not enjoying the new beard at all. I hate it, and every time I think about it, it makes it makes me want to itch and touch it, and if I itch and touch it, then I'm going to get it on my fingers, and I don't want to get it on my fingers. I hate blue. I, I love the color blue, but I hate... Ugh. Ugh. This is agony. Every moment of this is agony. Ugh. Jesus Christ, Jack is bourbon. We're not... If Jack is bourbon, then bourbon is corn whiskey. There you go. If Jack is bourbon, then bourbon is corn whiskey. Jack is Tennessee whiskey. Why is it Tennessee whiskey? Because Jack Daniels, Brown Foreman, calls Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey. It was bourbon. It could be called bourbon if they wanted it to be bourbon. But it is Tennessee whiskey. 
because the company that makes it, puts it on the label, calls it Tennessee whiskey. And if we look at Tennessee whiskey and we say Tennessee whiskey is really bourbon, then we should look at bourbon and say bourbon is really corn whiskey. But bourbon is not corn whiskey. Bourbon is bourbon. And Tennessee whiskey is not bourbon. It's Tennessee whiskey. And the never-ending discussion about whether or not Jack Daniels is bourbon is, it's, it drives me, it, it's the dumbest. It, and, and, I, and it's dumb because Jack Daniels tells us what Jack Daniels is. It says it right there on the label. Tennessee whiskey. That's it. If they wanted to be called a bourbon, they would call themselves a bourbon. But they don't want to call themselves a bourbon. They want to call themselves something else. And Tennessee whiskey is not a federal definition. There's not a legal identifier of what Tennessee whiskey is any more than there's a legal identifier of what Texas whiskey is. But they want to call themselves whiskey, they call themselves whiskey. They want to call themselves Tennessee whiskey, they call themselves... If they wanted to call themselves bourbon, they would. But they don't. And if they don't want to call themselves bourbon, I don't want to call them bourbon. I don't. I barely want to call them consumable drink because it's barely, barely drinkable. Barely. If you have enough Coke, you can make it palatable. Uh, but I don't want to give them too much of my attention. They drive me nuts. They don't need me. <laughs> they don't need my help. <laughs> uh, never drink Mountain Dew. I can crazy Asian <laughs> Dew sauce. Uh, next bar, go to our order an AV... Aviation cocktail? Is that the gin from uh, that gorgeous bastard Ryan Reynolds? Ah. M. Quat Kingdom? Mecca of Knowledge on Rum. M. Quat Kingdom. I'm going to have to look them up offline. M. Q. U. T. Kingdom. Mquat, M Q U T, Mquat Kingdom. I'll check that out. Thank you, Dustin. Appreciate that. Um, ordering the Ridden House. I don't even know what the fuck. <laughs> uh, aviation cocktails: two ounces gin, one half ounce maraschino liqueur, quarter ounce cream de. Oh shit, that's a whole lot of stuff. Good God. That is a whole lot. Oh, two shades. Oh, Jesus Christ, Corey. <laughs> I got to admit, that's a good joke, though. Um, <laughs> oh, Bull Rush is in the house. Cheers. All right, so Bull Rush, add your name to the list. So last week. The last show that I did in the month of August, I said if we pass 750 subscribers before the show ends, I'd dye my beard blue before my next show starts, and we passed 750. We were at 750. We hit 750 during the show before I logged out. When I logged out, we had 750, and I said I would do it blue, so I'm doing, I did it blue. There you go. That's it. That, that's the story. And I literally, I am, I, I, I hate it with, I absolutely, without question, hate this. It is terrible. You see my eyes. I'm not kidding. I hate it. It's the worst. Um, but, uh, 2K comedy, holy shit, you're in the house too? 2K comedy, you're on the list. Uh, we we were um, in Pasadena last Friday, me and my lovely wife, on our, our, our date night, anniversary date night. We were in Pasadena watching the 2K Comedy Guys uh, put on a show. Put on a hell of a show, uh, without question. Put on an absolute banger of a show. Kua Genti was the host. Uh, Jody Summers, uh, Flo Fernandez... Alec with a K, 
a bunch of great comedians. Uh, just rocked the whole fucking night. It was a ton of fun. Um, they're in Dallas this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Jody Summers is a dude who uh, was from uh, the Humble area up here. Uh, if you get a, if you're in the Houston area or if they're in your area and you get a chance to watch them, uh, absolutely watch them because uh, they are funny as hell. Um, cola is the cola nut flavor. I did not know that the cola that there was such a thing as a cola nut. Interesting, Corey. That is good information. Um, sun. Did I miss somebody? Sunflower. Oh, yeah, sunflowers right there. Got, got it. Uh, I did not miss it. Please think Coke. People think Coke was made. Uh, Coke. Uh, well, well, there was a time that there was a little dash of cocaine in Coke. Uh, back before Coke was uh, cocaine was considered a. Um, uh, I mean, Jesus Christ! They put cocaine in all kinds of stuff back in the late eighteen hundreds and early nineteen hundreds. Cocaine was in a lot of stuff. Um. Uh, from, uh, well, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, tinctures and herbal medications had morphine, cocaine, uh, mostly morphine and cocaine. THC wasn't a thing that they put in, uh, tinctures and stuff like that, but those snake oil salesmen, oh, Jesus Christ, heroin, morphine, cocaine, you get all kinds of great stuff from the back of a, uh, 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 one of those apothecary, uh, wagons that they would drag around. Uh, and I believe, I do, I, I don't think that that's an urban myth, uh, because I was taught that back in the 80s. I was told that back in the 80s. I don't think that's a modern urban myth. I am 99% sure that that is, that is a real thing, that uh, Coca-Cola had cocaine in it. Um, but, you know, it, I mean, it could ultimately be an urban myth. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain that like, that's a, that's a fact that I've grown up with knowing, um, uh, that predates the internet. So it could be, it could have been a myth from the early eighties, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that co Coca-Cola had cocaine in it, uh, in the early, early days, uh, after the, probably after the thirties, when cocaine became a regulated substance, it was no longer, uh, in Coke. But there you go. Uh, ting ting. Two hundred years is really ticking ting. Even my cancel with my candy bacon. Two fifty. RC cola is the best flavored of the list. I I'm not a big fan of RC cola, but I there's a RC cola drinkers are absolutely true believers of RC cola. Uh, they're, they're absolute true believers. They love it to death. Uh, just like Coke drinkers, they don't switch from Coke to anything else. Uh, Pepsi drinkers, I don't know how much Pepsi drinkers are committed to Pepsi. Yeah. But, you know, like Coke drinkers, they drink Coke. They, they, that's what they drink. They, they, they drink Coke. You go to the store, you order Coke. Uh, the grocery, not the grocery store. You go to the restaurant, you order Coke. The restaurant says, we only have Pepsi. And they're like, well, I'll have water. There it's Coke, we have Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, RC Cola, water. That's it. That's kind of how it that's that's kind of how it goes. Um, of course, I don't know a whole lot of restaurants that have RC Cola anymore. I'm sure they exist. Coca leaves and cola nuts. Well, maybe that's what it is. It was the coca leaves, not cocaine, but coca leaves. Maybe that's what it was. Um and maybe that's where the idea that it had cocaine in it because it came from coca leaves, uh, or it had a, a derivative. But I'm I I really do think because right. you have to look it up because I'm sure this myth has been dispelled several times. Did Coca Cola Coca Cola have cocaine? Did it have cocaine? Did Coca-Cola, did it ever have cocaine? It was invented in 1885 by John Pemberton. This we know. Um, the original recipe for Coca-Cola came. <laughs> ah, that is, it says it's true. 
This discovery lead to changes in the way a drug is used. Coca-Cola's history has been well documented. The drink was invented in 1885. John, see, John Pemberton was uh, he was addicted to morphine following uh, the Civil War, and he was looking. He was he was he was working on something to get him off of the morphine, and that's when he came up with the Coca-Cola uh, mixture. Um, the drink was invented in 1885. Who made the original formula in his backyard? His recipe contained cocaine in the form of an extract of the coca leaf, which inspired the coca part of the beverage's name. The cola comes from the cola nut, which contains la la la. And this is from uh, a site called Just Think Twice. Um, now the question is, yeah. So there you go. Uh, and it is. This is a United States government drug enforcement administration website. The inclusion of a link on this website does not. So this is a DEA website. Just think twice dot gov. Huh? How about that? So this is a government. It's actually a government website. <laughs> uh, DEA related website. So yes, Coca-Cola did in fact have cocaine in it. Not just coca leaves but a derivative of uh cocaine from the coca leaves so there you go um life is great twins are evil oh moon pie god i could i could eat a moon pie right now i could absolutely eat a moon pie so uh last time we went on a camping trip to inks lake it was last uh it was in the summer in july we went to we went to Eaks Lake and it was a full moon, and it was no I'm sorry it was not full moon it was uh, uh I'm sorry it was not in the summer it was in uh over spring break and we went to Eaks Lake on Pi Day, uh, March fourteenth two thousand twenty two for what that's worth uh, but we went on Pi Day it was March fourteenth and to celebrate Pi Day I got moon pies for everybody and it was also a full moon. And there was this crazy old lady who wanted to watch, who wanted us to all turn our lights out so she could look at the stars. And I'm like, you can't see the fucking stars. All you can see is the moon. And that's when we decided that she wasn't really looking at the stars because it was a full moon. She was looking at the moon because she's a witch. And she was looking at the moon because she had to do some kind of a magic spell with the moon. And what happened that night was, you know, after we put everything out, the winds whipped up crazy that night. Like, people lost their... Uh, the, the little shelter tents over their uh, uh, picnic tables. And, you know, the whole next day we were talking about how we had moon pies and it was a moon witch and we should have given the moon witch a moon pie. That way we, we would have made her happy and she wouldn't have made the winds come. And and we were just, <laughs> it was a whole fucking story. Like we, we sat here, we sat there around our picnic table eating breakfast talking about this crazy old woman who wanted us to turn off, uh, put out our fires, turn off our lights so that she could look at the stars, which were all blotted out because the moon was so damn bright because it was a full moon. And then, because, you know, like, we didn't do it and the, our neighbors didn't do it, that's when the the clouds came in, the winds kicked up, and all the stuff, like, you, we couldn't enjoy our fire anyway. Then, then because of the winds, because of the dry conditions, and but mostly because of the winds, the next night, fires weren't enough. Was it the next night? No, not the next night, but the night after that, our last night there. Fires weren't allowed. Uh, no barbecues were allowed. No open flames at all were allowed at all. So the moon witch got her revenge Not uh, the next night because the next night nobody could have fires. Nobody could be out by the fire. Nobody could be up late talking around the fire, doing normal camp out -y type of stuff because the moon witch got spurned because people wouldn't turn out their lights. So there you go. That was... And all of that is to, uh, all of that was because I was reminded of how good moon pies are because uh, moon pies are delicious. <laughs> uh, anyway, salted peanuts and eat a moon pie when you have an RC. Uh, don't you? Oh no, you you uh, you you soak the peanuts in Coke. It's uh, peanuts and Coke is what uh, is what you do. Are they toddlers or eleven? Uh, what's a moon pie? What's a moon pie? Oh, baby girl. Moon pies are just, 
fucking amazing. It is, yeah, like like Mike said, it is a marshmallow sandwich coated in chocolate, and it is just mm, so good. Mm. It's like a s'more. It's, it's like a, it's like a, it, it, it's everything that's in a s'more. Graham cracker, chocolate, marshmallow. Except the chocolate goes on the outside and not on the inside. It is so good. Oh, it's so good. So good. All right. All right. Yay. All right, Mike, I think people in the South do RC and peanut. People in Georgia do Coca-Cola and peanuts. People in the South do Coca-Cola Thank you very much. People in the South do Coca-Cola. How far fucking back am I on? Holy Jesus. The, 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 the slider is in the middle of my screen. Where are we at? 10.58? Oh, shit. I'm 40 minutes behind. I've, I've gotten further behind since I started. All right. Bitters are... Uh, bitters are... Well, now bitters are flavors in alcohol. It's a very low alcohol, a low proof alcohol with bit with uh, uh, flavors. They are uh, herbal, uh, aged herbs and spices in alcohol, usually in a barrel. Um, you have aromatic bitters and flavored bitters. Uh, and back in the way back when, in the 1800s and early 1900s, bitters were sold as medicines, medicinal bitters. Uh, so you get these for whatever ails you, for your cough, for your sniffles, for your headaches, for uh, uh, aches in your joints, for stiffness in your hands. Uh, but you could also get some that were a little bit stronger that had morphine, cocaine, heroin, all kinds of really good stuff in them. Uh, but these were sold as medicine, uh, but they were also used as, uh, hell, even in the 1700s, but they were also used as mixers in uh, cocktails in the original cocktails, which were sugar, water, and bitters with either whiskey, well, usually it was whiskey, but also uh, rum or vodka. And there you go. That's all bitters are, is it's a mixture of herbs and spices that are put into alcohol and aged over time. Jägermeister is technically a bitter. It's a high alcohol bitter, but it is technically a bitter. So there you go. That's what bitters are. Um, they're just, and, and for real, these were sold as, this is a, uh, orange aromatic bitter. I also have a Aztec chocolate bitter. Um, I have more orange bitters. I have, uh, uh, some more aromatic bitters. I have a walnut bitter, uh, in my... Uh, other bar in the kitchen. Uh, bitters come in all flavors, uh, all styles. They're used for flavorings, aromas, and uh, in some cases, coloring. But they're not generally good to drink by themselves because they have a really strong flavor to them, like Jägermeister. But you can get peppermint bitters that have a really uh, aromatic smell to them and a really strong pepperminty flavor, but a really aromatic and open up your sinuses. And that's why they were used as medicinal way, way back in the day. But also you get prescriptions for whiskey way, way back in the day, you know, during prohibition. Um, but sorry, my microphone fell. So my audio probably sucked there for a few minutes. But, um, felt weird. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's what bitters are. That's what they're for. And back in the, you know, way, way back in the way back when bitters were used as for their medicinal qualities. Um, and they would have some medicinal qualities. Uh, I mean, the original use of alcohol back in, you know, when alcohol was invented, you know, hard alcohol, hard liquor, Back when it was invented, it was used medicinally. It would uh, it would put you to sleep. It would ease your pain. It would uh, uh, ease your anxiety. It would uh, uh, you know if you if you were injured, it would uh, help with the pain that you were feeling and and ease you on into nap time or 
death, whichever, uh, whichever, whichever was the cure that the uh, doctors prescribed. Um, but that was that was the the original purpose of these guys was medicinal uh, herbs that would be put into the alcohol would be intended to help ease inflammation, like basal bitters. There is such a thing as basal bitters. Uh, would ease inflation or inflammation rather. Um, celery bitters were good for, or thought to be good for, uh, uh, respiratory, uh, things, uh, like peppermint, mint bitters, open up your sinuses. There were all kinds of things that bitters were used for medicinally, but they were also used for, uh, cocktails in the early 18, in the early 1800s, they, they started to be used for, uh, cocktails. Uh, specifically old fashioned cocktails, which weren't called old fashions in the 1800s, early 1800s. They weren't called old fashions until the late 1800s when people started ordering those cocktails made the old fashioned way. Uh, so there you go. That's what bitters are. Um, uh, banana flavored moon pies. Oh God. Banana flavored moon pies are so good too. Uh, they also have banana flavored bitters, uh, not to, uh, not to lose the thread there, but they definitely have banana flavored bitters, which are quite, uh, delicious. <sighs> they know better than to piss me off. Uh, Angostura bitters, English Angostura bitters, a concentrated bitter herbal alcoholic preparation based on gentian herbs and spices. There you go. Literally. Yep. That is correct. Uh, well, and I would assume it is because you just like probably Googled that <laughs> and they cut and pasted. Uh, thank you, Jen, for the elucidation, uh, illumination. Yeah. Bitters are an herbal additive to certain mixes. Manhattans usually call for aromatic bitters, but I like using, yeah, I like orange bitters too. Orange bitters are good. Uh, if you don't have the garnish, uh, orange bitters are really good to use. Um. The red bandanas, not unions. Uh, the red bandanas did not signify communism. Uh, but yeah, I mean, communism does, does commonly use a red flag. But uh, that was not because communists are red. That's because the uh, Bolsheviks used a red flag and the Mensheviks used a white flag. White flag with a red flower versus a red flag with a white flower. Since, um, did I blow a Smurf? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nick. Um, <laughs> and again, the Smurfs, blowing a Smurf would just put like streams of, of Smurf jizz all up and down. This is definitely juices from uh, Smurfette. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> are bitters similar to flavors in herbal tea? Uh, yes. That is, yes, they are. Uh, uh, sunflowers. Uh, absolutely. They are very similar to that. Um, orange bitters is a form of bitters. Cocktail flavor. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Coriander, that's the one I was thinking of too. Coriander, anise, all of these things, they, yeah, they make for, uh, you know, anything that has any spices or anything that you put on your food, you put it in alcohol, the alcohol is going to extract all those flavors out of it. Um, the more of those spices that you put into the alcohol, the more of the flavor that goes into the alcohol. And uh, then you just cut the alcohol with water uh, to get it down to a very, to uh, either a very low proof. Uh, what is the proof on these bitters? Uh, does it give the proof amount? There's like a legal limit to what the proof is allowed to be in bitters, I think. But because you only do dashes of it, generally it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what the proof actually is because you're not, you're getting hardly any alcohol out of the bitters and into the uh, drink itself. 
This does not have a proof statement. But but bitters can be anywhere between... Um, see, this, this company was founded in 1864. Bitters can be anywhere between, uh, well, really low and really high proofs. Uh, let me see if I can find the... 28% alcohol by volume. This one's orange bitters are 28% alcohol by volume. Or those orange bitters specifically. Ah, I just dropped my pen. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Monkey toes activated. Come on, monkey toes. Boom. Uh, so yeah, they're relatively low alcohol, like half the alcohol of uh, my whiskey, but uh, when you're when you're applying the bitters to your drink, you're just putting in dashes of it. So you're not you're not getting a whole lot of alcohol out of the bitters. It's mostly for the flavor that you get. Um, uh, mostly the flavors that you get in the uh, uh, mixture itself. Uh, so there you go. Uh, traditionally, an alcoholic preparation flavor of botanical matter uh, for bitter bittersweet flavor. Correct. There you go. Uh, y'all have definitely stepped up with the, uh, uh, with the backlog of chat and I appreciate that. Uh, medicines, but now sold as digestifs. Yep. They help with all kinds of, well, they presumably help with all kinds of stuff. Um, and you know, it's not, it's not drastically different than what, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow does with goop and, uh, you know, your oils, your essential oil sales people, they use oils with their herbs and spices instead of alcohol with their herbs and spices, but it's essentially, effectively, the same snake oil. It's just this tastes better. <laughs> um, so there you go. Any... Have been a parent... Pretty much what Jen said. They're super con. Yeah, super concentrated. That is correct. They are super. They taste like shit by themselves. They are dreadful. Um, absolutely dreadful. Miss my Kentucky bar. Just sold beer, but a wonderful place. Um, I like going to some bars. Some bars are hard to go to, but they're not all. Uh. Have I ever eaten blue chicken meat? No, I've never eaten blue chicken meat. I don't even like eating blue cake. I don't like blue... I'm not a big fan of blueberries either. But uh, no, no, blue icing on cake, I avoid, I, I avoid blue foods. I don't like them. I don't like the way blue dye tastes. I don't really like dye in my food. But I don't... know blue foods, I've never had blue foods. Blue chicken meat, rather, no. Uh, when you, once you get to where you're comfortable going to a bar by yourself, you're an adult. <laughs> Is anyone else happy that when Umble read blue food, he went straight to animals? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> um, blue animal lives matter. Kangaroo lives matter. <laughs> Deep fried blue crispy. Just having a drink and talking to random people. Yeah. That that is the key to going to a bar by yourself. Uh, being able to to turn to the guy next to you and go, wow. And just start talking about whatever is on the in the news, the Astros, the Mets, whatever. Just, you know, Mets, the fucking Mets. I hate the Mets. Uh, but yeah, just be able to turn to the guy next to you and just, uh, you know, talk. That is the key. And if you can't do that, then uh, it is really hard to go to a bar by yourself. Because, I mean, I'm perfectly happy going to a bar and having a drink and not saying a fucking word to anybody. Having my two or three drinks, paying my bill, and heading back out the fucking door. I am perfectly happy with that. Am I ever going to catch up? Jesus Christ. Um, the Rue is only going to fucking destroy me if I let the fight go on beyond the first couple of punches. Yeah, 
only, only if, like, if the Rue, you know, if I go up with the Rue and I give it a couple of the pip bip, the cross and the jab and the bam, and then the Rue's like, what the fuck, dude? And he comes at me. Yeah, then it's, yeah, I'm done for. But if I take them those shots, I'm like, da, 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 pop, pop. And the Rue's like, no, nah, I don't want any, this guy, this guy's a fucking crazy man. And he uh, backs off. Yeah. That's it. They're going to call it. They're going to ring the bell and it'll be over. That's it. Just like that. Uh, where am I going to fight the kangaroo? I'm going to, there's a place called the, uh, the, it, it's an, it's, it's an aquarium. Humble aquarium. It's, it's called an aquarium, but it's not just an aquarium. Houston Interactive Aquarium and Animal Sanctuary? Habitat? Whatever it is. Um, this is what it is. An animal adventure. It is the huge. There it is. An interactive adventure and learning period. That's what it is. The Houston Interactive. Blah, 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 blah. They've got animal encounters, attractions, VIPs. Uh, and in the animal encounters, they have kangaroos. And I'm going to get an animal encounter. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to beat the piss out of a kangaroo. Because they deserve it. See? The mammals. Feed and interact with many amazing mammals like lemurs, kangaroos, and a sloth. I didn't. And I know kangaroos are not mammals. They are marsupials. Uh, but they don't know that, apparently. And that's why. Uh, <laughs> the things I do for my people. I get my ass kicked by a kangaroo. Although, I think I stand a fairly good chance because I've been training for this all my life. All my life I've been training for this. Uh, well, all my adult life. All of the last year. All of the last year. If I can't have it hard, I don't want it in my... What? <laughs> have you ever done a stand-up, soggy bacon... Um, What is a stand-up? Some people cook it in water first to extract some of the sodium mm. for bacon. Pan-fried bacon, my cast iron too because I cook eggs in the... Yeah, see? Eggs in the grease is just... Mwah, that's just... Oh, all that flavor is delicious. Uh, Mr. Jiggs is in the house. Cheers, Mr. Jiggs. Um, Mr. Jiggs. On to the list. This and this is the last chance to get on the list. So, um, no, sunflower. No, absolutely. That is where I draw the line. We will not do glitter. We will not do glitter in this. This is no. That is a. That is an act of terrorism, and I am not down with terrorism. Thank you very much. No, never. Um. Everything cooked to death, but eats limp bacon. Ugh. I hate limp bacon. Um, limp bacon is the worst. Forces off evil LLC in your next department. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing as I was saying it. Um, cheers to everyone. How's everyone? Bourbon Ron is in the house. Bourbon Rendezvous. We got a whole fucking list of names today. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, every one of you guys is going to be added to the wheel of doom and glory. And I will be spinning the wheel sometime next week. I will give at least 24 hours notice. Must be present to win. Um, I might do it Friday. Devu. I might do it Friday. Kind of leaning towards that. Uh, corn whiskey has a definition. Bourbon is a subcategory of whiskey. Yep. It is all marketing. Whiskey is what it is. They, they're whiskey. I don't care what they sell it as outside of the United States. If they want to call their whiskey a Great Dane uh, espresso, they call it a Great Dane espresso, and it's a Great Dane espresso. Tennessee whiskey is whiskey. 
Uh, I have a whiskey that is a corn whiskey that I have a co- that I call it a straight whiskey. It is a straight whiskey. It is a, an American whiskey. It falls into the category of American whiskey because that's how we want to sell it. I don't want to sell it as a corn whiskey. Tennessee whiskey, they want to sell it as a corn whiskey. They sell it as a corn whiskey. They want to sell it as American whiskey. They sell it as American whiskey. They want to sell it as bourbon. They sell it as bourbon. They don't want to sell it as a bourbon. They specifically don't sell it as a bourbon. It's not a bourbon. You can call it a bourbon if you want to, but it's not a bourbon. This is not a debate. There it is. It's just not. You're wrong. I mean, you can call it, but I mean, you're not, well, no, that's not fair. You're not wrong, but you're not right. It's Tennessee whiskey. If they want to call it Tennessee whiskey, they can call it, t- they want to call it, if they want to call it a compact car, I guess they, uh, that's probably legal for them to call it a compact car. I'm not sure. Uh, they could probably call it a, call it whatever the fuck they want. Sour mash whiskey. Tennessee whiskey, sour mash whiskey. It is technically a corn whiskey. It's not a bourbon. If, you, if they don't want to call it a bourbon, it's not a bourbon. And I'm not going to call it what they don't want to call it. I'm not going to call it anything, quite honestly. Because it's dumpster water. Uh, is there a big difference between whiskey and bourbon? Uh, Sunflower, there is no difference between... There is no difference between whiskey and bourbon. Bourbon is whiskey. There's more whiskey... There's more whiskeys in the world than just bourbon. Uh, bourbon is a subcategory of whiskey, just like there's no difference between a German Shepherd and a dog. A German Shepherd is a dog. There's no difference between a dog and a German Shepherd. There are many different types of dogs that are not German Shepherds. A much broader and wider expanse of creatures that are dogs that are not German Shepherds. But there is no daylight between dog and German Shepherd. Those are interchangeable. Bourbon is whiskey. Whiskey is bourbon. Uh, so there you go. Coming to America scene where the many characters are discussing Muhammad Ali and Cassius Clay. And what... Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, Jack Daniels is the Muhammad Ali of the Cassius Clays of whiskeys. And there you go. That's That's a perfect... That is a great... That is a great description of that stupid, idiotic argument. It is, it is what it is. Uh, and Bull Rush, to be completely fair, bourbon is also a brand. <laughs> so is corn whiskey. All of those legal def- those legal definitions are, are, you know, Texas whiskey is a brand. Kentucky bourbon is a brand. Texas bourbon is a brand. It's all branding. It, um, and and there are legal definitions that back up specific types of whiskeys uh like i can't call uh i can't call my bourbon a rye whiskey i can't call my straight whiskey a rye whiskey because there's no rye you know there's not enough rye in either one of them to call them rye whiskeys um but where where i do have a choice between what to call them because i could call all both of those the straight whiskey and boomtown bourbon i call both of them corn whiskeys if i want to but i call neither one of them corn whiskeys because corn whiskey has a specific flavor and style that you expect when you call it corn whiskey, and they don't taste like either. Neither one of them tastes like that. So uh, they don't get called corn whiskey. So there you go. But yes, technically, bourbon is corn whiskey. Technically. If you want to get technical about it, as, as, as much as Jack Daniels is a bourbon, uh, Jim Beam is a corn whiskey. So, there you go. Uh, it is all about branding and marketing and all that nonsensical stuff. Um, uh, speaking of unions, the Janus Act decision is affected the public sector. I am not familiar with the Janus Act. Not yet, but I'm going to have to look it up, I guess. Our membership is dwindling. When was uh, I don't I'm not familiar with it. I have to look it up. God damn it! I fucking do homework after my fucking shows. I have to look that shit up. Damn you! <laughs> 
Bluebeard bourbon. Bluebeard bourbon. I think Bluebeard would be a rum. I think that'd be more rum. The blue in my beard matches my eyes. Huh. Cool. Um, the whiskey has said the same thing. Flavor is altered. It was a bourbon, but is it was a bourbon, but right. I mean, they they uh, there's a lot of uh, bourbon finished in. Like they can't call it bourbon whiskey anymore. It's bourbon whiskey finished in a cask of blah blah blah. Uh, they can do that. That's legal. Uh, uh, that's why bourbons aged in port barrels are marketed. Yeah, but that's what they call them. They, uh, for example, this one, where is it? Is it that one? No, this one? Yeah, this one. Uh, Angel's Envy. It is Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished in port wine barrels. That's what they call it. Uh, they can't just call it Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey because it is no longer Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It's Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey finished in port wine barrels. Um, it's a very attractive bottle. It really is. But yeah, they can't just leave it with... Uh, they can't just leave it at that. They have to, they have to specify uh, that it's been... That, that, that it's finished in. That they can legally do, but they can't just say Kentucky bourbon whiskey because it's no longer Kentucky bourbon whiskey. They can't just finish, like, stop the sentence right there. Um, oh, Bull Rush, the list that you're on is the list uh, for our Wheel of Doom and Glory. Uh, do I have the picture? Where's the picture? Uh, let me switch back to my other page real quick. Uh, the Wheel of Doom and Glory on which or for which we are spinning to win a sample kit of our three whiskeys, straight whiskey, special reserve, and double oak rye, plus a sample of our Boomtown bourbon. Dun, 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 the Boomtown bourbon, the legendary, uh, off talked about, rarely had Boomtown bourbon. So if you win this wheel, if you win the spin of the wheel next week, you will have in your possession uh, one each of our bottles of Straight Whiskey, Special Reserve, Double Oak Rye, and Boomtown Bourbon. Uh, so there you go. You got three specs to get Double Oak Rye for your birthday. Hey, I've bottled it. I have it ready. That's 100% on specs for not getting it back in stock. Uh, we have it at specs, and we have it in Total Wine. Uh, Total Wine is more in stock than Specs because they actually replace their inventory after it gets sold out. Specs was really slow, or has been really slow on on uh, replenishing it. Specs is a great store. Specs is a great chain. Specs is a great organization. Uh, and I've, I've sold a lot of whiskey through Specs, but they are really, really, really slow to replenish their stock sometimes. Um, uh, some stores right now, as of right now, we have been out of stock in some stores since the beginning of uh, the middle part of July. Uh, and it's not on me. I've got it. I've got the shit sitting uh, in my warehouse. Our former distributor has shit sitting in their warehouse. They just haven't done it yet. And it, it has been, it's, it's a source of never ending contention between uh, me and Specs that, that they're really slow to replenish their stocks. And it is one of the many reasons why we now have a new distributor uh, who is better at doing that than our old distributor was. Uh, one of these days I'll tell you all about it. The, uh, the distributor saga is just uh, fucking insane. It's the, it's the most insane thing about making whiskey and selling whiskey is that I do not have... Con There's a whole third of the supply chain that I don't have any control over. You know, there's the making it, then there's the selling it to my distributor, and then the distributor actually getting it in stores, and I have no control over the distributor getting it into stores. Once it gets into the stores, I have some control over going to the stores and pulling the bottles off the shelf and getting them into the hands of people. You know, I can send out a sales team to do tastings and samplings and all kinds of stuff that way. But uh, that one link in the chain, that's the weakest link between the distributor and the actual retailers. And you would think that this 
distributor would be on top of it more because they want to make money. The sooner they put it on the shelves, the sooner they get paid. But no, they're just, they, our old distributor was just fucking lazy about it. So, uh, holy shit, anal beads, what? What? <laughs> um, why are people in the union if they don't like how they are run? Um, uh, oh, that's a good question. I don't know the answer. Well, some some shops require you to be in the union. Uh, they enjoy the benefits of the union, but they don't want to pay for being in the union. But uh, and that's some shops. Some shops require it. Some shops, like the state of Texas, doesn't have. Uh, required union membership. Um, and some companies prevent it actively, like Starbucks and <laughs> Walmart. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, and happy birthday, too, by the way, Ron. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> um, Do, 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 do. Pretty much have to represent all the employees. Uh, let y'all handle that. Um, I've never been in a. I've, I've never actually been in a union. I've never been in a shop that had union employees. Uh, my lovely wife has been a member of the teachers union before. I think she is still a member. Um, Coke had cocaine, but it was an extract of the coca leaf. Uh, you'll see this in an hour. <laughs> Um, Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Ooh, yeah. I would tell you, whiskey in Canada Dry is really good. Uh, I am a big fan of Canada Dry and lemon juice uh, with whiskey. It is a really nice cocktail. Um, their label is bourbon aged in port barrels. Right. Uh, Yeah, so there you go. Um, they did use to put cocaine in the soda, early 1910. Uh, 2K comedy. Uh, I'm actually getting close to catching up. I'm in the neighborhood of getting caught up. Where's Where to go? Uh, I am way far away from getting caught up. Holy crap, I'm scrolling still. Oh, Jesus. All right. I am, where are we? It's 1130 on chat. Oh, fuck me. All right. Your medicinal doctors start chewing cocoa leaves at the base. Leaves you, oh, I didn't know that cocoa leaves would uh, leave you at altitude sickness. That's interesting. Um, bourbon has to be aged in new wine. That is true. Uh, can only be used one time. That is true. Uh, corn... Corn whiskey, to be completely fair, doesn't have to be aged at all, but uh, it can be aged in new or used uh, charred oak barrels. Uh, and if you take corn whiskey and age it in new charred oak barrels, then technically it is now bourbon or corn whiskey. It can still be corn whiskey if you want to call it corn whiskey. Uh, but if you go to all the trouble to make in bourbon uh, and you just want to call it corn whiskey, it's it, you can charge a lot more for bourbon than you can for corn whiskey. Because people just don't pay, they don't pay bourbon prices for corn whiskey. Um, scrolling through chat, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let chat win, even if it's three in the morning. Um, <laughs> giant pallet of vintage Cokes out the window. Coca-Cola is invented by a pharmacist named John Smith Pemberton. Yes. John Smith Pinner, who was addicted to morphine following the uh, Civil War. Uh, all drugs will be legalized in the future? Maybe. Psy Psilocybin? What the fuck is psilocybin? Is that PCP? That's weird. Uh... Oh, yeah, I know about Moon Pies. Moon Pies, I grew up in Moon Pies. Moon Pies are delicious. Where do I find Moon Pies? You can find Moon Pies Amazon, Walmart, Kroger's. Uh, I know they have Kroger's up there. Uh, Publix. 
Uh, yeah, moon pies are ubiquitous. You can find them at any grocery store. Uh, they are everywhere. Uh, but certainly Walmart. Um, but if you can't find them at any of the grocery stores you have locally, go to Amazon. You can absolutely find them on Amazon. You can order cases of them through Amazon. <coughs> Since we discussed bourbon versus whiskey, pop, soda, or soda pop, none. It's Coke. Here in Texas, or here in Houston, here in the South, uh, it's Coke, unless it's not Coke, and you specifically want something other than Coke. If you just, it, Coke generically is Coke. Um, we don't, yeah, we don't call it pop soda or soda pop. It's Coke. That's a, that's a, that's something that goes further north than uh, Dallas. Uh, that's a, a langu linguistic stylization that is uh, not local to us. Um, oh, God, nuking them. Oh, ting, ting. Oh, you're killing me. Yes, hot moon pies are the fucking best. Uh, They're so good. Yes, that's true. Or you could actually take them and put them on a... Uh, uh, Put them on a stick and put them over uh, uh, open flame, too. Uh, heat them up that way. Then you have hot s'mores. Uh, so if you're camping and you don't have a, uh, what do you call it, a um, microwave, you can do it that way. Uh, yeah, see, there you go. You live in Georgia, everything's called Coke. Uh, I'm in Texas, and everything is, co well, I'm in Houston, and everything is called Coke. Although Houston is a more of a mixing melting pot than some of the rest of the state. And my family's from Louisiana. So in Natchitoches, Louisiana, it's Coke. And it's been Coke ever since I was born. Uh, I wasn't born in Louisiana, but my family's from Louisiana. And uh, just because I was born in Ohio doesn't mean that I have the, that I was raised by Ohioans. Um, So there you go. Uh, what else we got? Let's keep rolling. This is fun. Uh, yeah, when, when they don't have Coca-Cola, then you have to get specific. But if you're just going to order a Coke, you order a Coke. That's it. Uh, if they, and if they don't have Coke, they will tell you, we don't have Coke, we have Pepsi. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. I'll have uh, <laughs> Dr. Pepper then. Thank you. Um Anyone does. Adults know the dangers. Let them live with their choices. So I know I have Coke about once a year. And yeah, I don't actually drink Coke as much as I used to. I use it mostly uh, at the bar, at the uh, distillery for mixers now. Uh, but I don't hardly ever drink Coke. Uh, I'll drink water. I drink a lot of water. Boiled peanuts. That's what it is. It's boiled peanuts, not uh, Coke peanuts. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I don't, I don't drink, uh, I don't drink Coke. I, I've Canada Dry. Uh, I've really started drinking ginger ale a lot. Uh, but orange bitters is your replacement for triple sec. I've never thought about that. Huh. But yeah, it makes sense. Um, it makes sense. You can use fewer bitters too. You can use fewer, you can use less bitters than you would use triple sec. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what, the fuck, what video you're talking about, Dustin. Sorry. Uh, but I'm not going to go looking. <laughs> not going to go looking. Sorry. Nope. Not going to happen. Um, not sure what, overthinking the blowing a Smurf <laughs> <laughs> Grand Marnier, yeah. I get unsweet tea, yeah. Margaritas is one drink I cannot get into. Uh, yeah, I, I'm okay with. I like margaritas, but I prefer whiskey sours. Uh, and there's there's not a whole lot of difference. And if you take a whiskey sour and throw in a little splash of Grand Marnier or. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, basically, you're getting the equivalent of, uh, yeah, uh, you're getting a, uh, a margarita with a better, uh, with a better <laughs> alcohol, quite honestly. Um, I just know in a recipe from Louisiana, they were good. Well, good, Ting Ting. Great. Do we dare crave Papa? <laughs> you 
guys are killing me. I love it. Um, so you can't drink Coke. You might want to try Arnold Palmer. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what we like. God, I like margaritas. God, I'm loving this. Um, drink plain iced tea. Yeah, see, I, I drink plain iced tea, too. I don't like uh, sweet tea. I prefer to sweeten my own tea. Um, I don't like sweet tea at all. There's no blue food. Blue on the bush, purple on the plate. Perhaps it bestows immortality. Maybe. Uh, maybe. When I get to 1,500, I need to make a blue whiskey. I, I have a blue labeled whiskey, uh, but a blue whiskey, I throw in a little blue curse out to a cocktail. I've done a blue a blue uh, curse, uh, whiskey sour with blue curacao. Blue curacao is a, uh, it's a blue, and in fact, I have it up here on the, oh, you can't see it. Uh, let me go to the other page. I have it up here on my shelf. And of course, I have the picture still up there. Get rid of that. That up here. This one here is blue curacao. Uh, and it will turn your cocktail blue if you, uh, if you put it in your cocktail. So I've done a uh, swamp grass cocktail, I think is what I... No, uh, mosquito, uh, a skeeter bite uh, in honor of the uh, Skeeters, uh, Sugarland Skeeters, when we were member uh, affiliated with them uh, as advertisers. And it was basically a whiskey sour with blue curacao. And it was a, a blue, it was a blue cocktail. And it was, it was, it was fine. It wasn't great, but it was fine. Um, the black is a non-natural color. Black's all through. Black is found all throughout nature. I mean, the crows and ravens and grackles and oh, there's all kinds of stuff. Addie Pacall has joined the chat. Cheers, Addie. Get your name added to the wheel of doom and glory. I wasn't going to add names today, but I decided to do it just because. The boozy version, all our pommel, is the John Daly. That's what I thought that was. I, I couldn't remember what the John Daly was. But that dude is a fucking god. I swear to God, John Daly is just, he's got his long white hair, and he, he's, he's shaped like a, 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 a Macy's Day, uh, Thanksgiving Day balloon, and he gets out on the golf course in his flip-flops and his floral shirts, and he's just like, you know, fuck it, and he just rips and just... Hits drives 500 yards, and he's, he's just like, he's walking off. He's like, hail to the king, boys, and that's it. He's just, oh, God, that dude is, he is an, an amazing. He's hes just living his best life. He's just great. He doesn't have to win another, he doesn't ever have to win another tournament. He is just 100% uh, sponsored and uh, uh, golfing for free. Love it. Ugh. Yawns. Um. <laughs> yes, I dyed my beard for uh, uh, for for clicks because I'm a I'm a I'm a whore. Uh, I said I'd do it last week. We had 750 before the end of the show. We had 750 before the end of the show, and I did it. That was it. Um, I pay to see him do that. Oh, the blue whiskey. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that. I can't do I can't do blue bourbon because that would have a food coloring. It would take it would it would have coloring and flavoring in it, so I couldn't call it a bourbon. Twenty five k get the idea of bourbon being sold at a reasonable proof considering you rejected. <laughs> Ninety proof is a reasonable proof for bourbon. It is a perfectly reasonable proof for bourbon. Uh, <laughs> uh, sunflowers. There is a ninety-nine percent likelihood that I will be live streaming, uh, live streaming my my fight with the kangaroo. Um, I'm gonna kick its ass. I yeah. I'm y'all put all the money on the kangaroo. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it. Absolutely, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm gonna I'm gonna bust that some bitch up. Two shots in the nose. Bip, bip. 
That's it. And he's going to be like, whoa, what is this crazy human doing? And uh, that's it. I'm going to take his girl. Just like that. Um, $25 bets on the cake. <laughs> y'all are... Y'all are not giving me any credit. You have no idea what I'm... Look at, I mean, uh, look at these guns. I can... Yeah. Confetti... No, no. I'm I'm cleaning this out. I'm going to get back to my normal color of kind of salt and pepper, black and gray. It's... Ugh. No. No confetti. No glitter. No. No. Absolutely not. No. All right. Maybe if we hit 800 by the end of the month. <laughs> 850. If we do 850 by the end of the month, that's another 75, 80 uh, uh, subscribers. If we if we if we hit eight 850 by the end of the month, maybe I'll consider it. If we start getting closer to the number, I'll consider it. But now you know I can say 850. I can say 800 now. I can say 800 now. We're we're 20 days before the end of the month. I can say 800, and we're not going to hit 800 by the end of the month. I can say yeah, I'll, I'll glitter my beard at 800 subs. Fine, but I'm gonna wait and see where we're at on the twentieth, <laughs> cause uh, I might go with uh, might go with eight fifty. You know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> you that that's not true, Dustin. Bourbon is bourbon is fifty one percent corn, which makes it a corn whiskey. You can't call corn whiskey bourbon, but you can absolutely call bourbon corn whiskey. Bourbon is a subset of corn whiskey. Corn whiskey is at least 51% corn. Bourbon is 51% corn. Bourbon is corn whiskey that has been special stuff done to it. Corn whiskey has a broader definition than bourbon. Bourbon has a more narrow definition than corn whiskey in the Venn diagram of corn whiskey, corn whiskey is the big circle, bourbon is the little circle. You can call bourbon corn whiskey if you choose to. You can't call all corn whiskeys bourbons because bourbon is a smaller circle than corn whiskeys. So, uh, no. So, there you go. Uh, Tennessee Waltz is better than Danube Waltz. Uh, is better than Danube Waltz? I don't know what that is. Um, nose run court so I can mark it. Fireball is a bourbon aged with cinnamon. Urgh. I don't know if Fireball is a bourbon aged with cinnamon. It's definitely a whiskey aged with cinnamon. Um, but I think once you run it through a grown man's anus, it can no longer be called a bourbon. Which is, if I'm not mistaken, the process that they use to make Fireball. I'm not certain. <laughs> I'm not certain, but I think that's how it's made. Uh, filtered through a, a grown man's anus. Uh, Jack Daniels and Xin Yang? Jack Daniels is everywhere, man. It is absolutely everywhere. Uh, mango habanero? Ugh, so many flavors. Uh, corn whiskey's 50% corn grain. Not 80, it's 50. Um... Uh, but even if corn whiskey is 80%, you know, bourbon can be 80%. Bourbon only has to be 50%. Um, I, but I think corn whiskey has to be at least 50%. I don't think corn whiskey has to be 80%. But I could be wrong about that. That's fair. I haven't, uh, I haven't drilled down on what makes corn whiskey the difference between corn whiskey. And uh, uh, I, my understanding was that it was at least 51% corn grain. Uh but that's that's what I remember it being back when I started doing it. Uh, not having oh there it is you quoted it there it is good. Not less than eighty percent corn grain. So just to be just to be completely square up, you can make if your bourbon is at least eighty percent corn, it is corn whiskey. Bourbon doesn't have to be fifty percent, just fifty percent. Bourbon can be at least fifty percent. So bourbon can be is corn whiskey. Bourbon is corn whiskey, unless bourbon doesn't have 80% corn. So, there you go. Some bourbons are corn whiskey. No, corn whiskey doesn't have to be bourbon. So, I stick by what I said. All bourbons aren't corn whiskey, but some bourbons are. 
Uh, and if you, if you, if you, oh, this is a stupid fucking con. I'm not going to have this fucking conversation. It's dumb. Um, what was that? Janice. Where was it? Janice Act. There it is. Janice asked me decision. Oh, the 2018. That's right. The basically, uh, uh, public employer cannot be forced to join the union and pay union dues. That's right. That was a 2018 decision. I remember now. Thank you for reminding me. Um, bourbon is an American made whiskey that must contain at least 51% corn. Uh, yep, that is correct. That is correct. At least 51% corn. Um, as a, yeah, everything you need to learn about is on a YouTube channel. That is 100% correct. Um, keep an eye on, come back up here. Uh, local homebrew store that has stuff for wines, beers. Da, da, da. When did Texas leave the Midwest and become the South? Uh, Texas has never been in the Midwest. I don't know what maps you own, but, okay, Southwest, yeah, Texas has not been in the Southwest either. Uh, part of Texas is in the Southwest. Most of Texas is in the South. Um, but, yeah, Texas is not... Texas is Southwest, depending on where you're at in Texas. Because if you kind of go... Uh, there's a line deline delineating Texas between, like, there's part of Texas that's southwest and part of Texas that's south. And, like, places like in East Texas are more south than southwest. I mean, nobody would think that Houston is southwest. Dallas tries to be southwest. But Dallas is as much south as they are southwest. But then when you get into San Antonio and Austin, that's more southwest than south. And El Paso is definitely southwest. Um, so there's kind of like this delineation between Houston and Dallas. And Dallas is kind of on the border. And in between Dallas and, you know, you start going south and, and it kind of hooks around. Like... Corpus Christi, Brownsville, uh, the place along the Gulf Coast, they're not southwest. They're not south. They're more south than southwest, but they're Gulf Coast. Um, they're a whole different animal over there. Uh, Galveston, also Gulf Coast, not really southern, more Gulf Coast, definitely not southwest. But when you start going western, further west, like Austin, San Antonio, and points west from there, definitely southwest. So... Certainly not Midwest, but you correct yourself, Southwest. Uh, and and Texas has that unique position where we're we're politically south, but geographically both Southwest and uh, South and Southwest. And uh, I guess if you really wanted to get technical, the Panhandle area up there in Amarillo, that's probably geographically Midwest, but no, it's geographically plain states. We're not far enough north to be Midwest. Yeah, that's, that's, that, you, you know, like you picture the state and then you kind of draw that line from Dallas and you kind of go south and hook it southwest towards McAllen. And that, you know, everything east of there is south and Gulf Coast. Everything west of there is probably southwest. That's, that's probably how you could, uh, uh, delineate the different locations geographically and culturally in the state. Probably. Ah, goodness. First job I had was at the local supermarket. Signed up for a union. Uh, took dues out of my paycheck every week. The bench I actually was getting paid under minimum. Damn, that sucks. I'm common good sells alcohol making kits too. Uh, find us on Twitter, Ting Ting, Arnold Palmer, da, 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 da. Have you ever tried to, have you ever tried to make anything? <laughs> moonshine is made with love and many different, oh yeah. See, here's a cool thing about moonshine. Moonshine is made literally from anything. 
molasses. Moonshine is a, a, a perfectly indigenous uh, alcohol. It's uh, corn, potatoes, sugar, um, beans, rice, uh, anything that had sugar in it or that had flavor you could add sugar to is what they would make uh, moonshine out of. And uh, moonshine is just... You can literally make moonshine out of uh, breakfast cereal or um, spoiled moon pies or you know whatever the hell you wanted to make it out of. Moon pie, moonshine is a... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a purely local... Goodness gracious. It's a purely local drink. I love... I love the the lore and history behind moonshine, um, and what it represents and what it does. So there you go. Um, Blue Hawaiian beach pier after work. Uh huh. Uh huh. Addy, I just missed Addy. Where'd it go? We're not that far. Am I that far behind in chat? 12.20. Aha, I've caught up. I play my Eru, put my thumper to sleep. Thanks for the tip. Uh, do cats count as subscribers? Only if they can subscribe and they have their own account. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, you remember that I said I'll consider. We'll see where we're at in a couple of weeks. Uh, when we come in on the week of the 23rd, that show on the 21st, we'll see where we stand. And if we could, we'll have a week to go. If we get our subscribers by the end of the month, we I'll, I'll, I'll consider it. I'll think about it, but we'll see. But, you know, if, I mean, if we're on pace already for 800, I'm not going to worry about it. It's got to be like a stretch goal, like 850 or something like that. But, but well, I mean, I've got plenty of dye of this beard shit. Ugh. Anyway, how to keep the insects out of my bubble exp Oh. How to keep the insects out of your bubbler... Well, does it matter if insects get into your bubbler? Because, I mean, if they're in your bubbler, they're not in the actual fermenter. But even if they are in the fermenter, who cares? Uh, you're going to, you, you'll if you're distilling, you're going to distill that shit out. If you're uh, just fermenting it, and you're going to filter it out. So it doesn't really matter, does it? I don't think it really matters. Uh, but I, when, whenever I do, whenever I did home stuff, I did uh, uh, water water locks. Uh, just the uh, pipe, the <coughs> <coughs> kind of an S trap with the water down at the bottom, and the uh, carbonation would bubble it out. So it was kind of an S trap. That's what I always did with my home stuff. Um, Corn whiskey is not required to be aged in wood, but it can be aged. Uh, you can also age corn whiskey in new barrels. Um, that is a possibility. But most people don't bother with new barrels for uh, their corn whiskey. Because it gives shit flavor. Um, going down, which cares? Da, 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 da. I've never tried to make anything. Da, da, da. Tube and a twist. Yep, there you go. Tube with a twist. That will do the trick. Bimbo's supposed to be on an owl versus kittens video soon. Uh, Houston is definitely not. Not Southwest. I can. I, I live here. I can tell you, we 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 do a lot of the rodeo stuff. We're kind of like the gateway. To, we're not. Yeah, Houston and not No, no, Houston's not. No, <laughs> no. Uh, 
No, no, it's not. Not entirely. I mean, geographically, most of the state is probably southwest, but most of the people are uh, not quite. Uh, geographically, southwest region, I'm not, I mean, that's, that is completely and totally true. Culturally, Culturally speaking, all of Texas is not in the Southwest. I'm telling y'all, Texas is not a homogenous smear of uh, a state. Geographically, most of the state is Southwest. If you get out towards San Antonio and Austin, geographically, the state is Southwest. But San Antonio and Austin, geographically, is vastly different than Houston, Galveston, Corpus Christi, and Dallas. Dallas is not... At all, Dallas is different than Oklahoma. The area uh, uh, in North North Texas where Dallas is it looks different than Oklahoma. You are in a geographically distinct area between Dallas, uh, Dal the geographically distinct area between Dallas and uh, how between Dallas and Fort Worth. Culturally, Fort Worth is more southwest than Dallas, without question. Fort Worth is more. Uh, more southwest than Dallas is, and that's a distance of, of 90 miles between those two cities. I'm telling y'all, Dallas, Houston, Galveston, Corpus Christi is vastly different than Austin, San Antonio, El Paso, Amarillo, Lubbock, uh, McAllen, and, and, and Midland and Odessa. Oh, holy shit. All those states out there in the west drastic or cities out there in the west drastically different than the cities over here in the east culturally we're different geographically we're different uh texas is a big goddamn place texas is a big goddamn place uh it is as as geographically different as uh western nebraska and eastern nebraska geographically different as uh southern alabama and northern alabama it is as geographically different as, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of, uh, uh, well, Western Montana and Eastern Montana, probably. I've never been to Montana, so I, I probably shouldn't use that as an example. But the Western part of Texas, without question, Southwest. The Eastern part of Texas, no. Culturally, geographically far more southern than the western part of the state. Y'all don't have to believe me, but I'm telling you, I live here. I can tell you, <laughs> having lived here and been to both both all parts of the state, from the valley to uh, the panhandle and from uh, the tip to uh, uh, Red River, what is it, the Sabine River Valley to the Rio Grande Valley, yeah, it's drastically different. I mean, you uh, Big Bend National Park and... Uh, Big Thicket National Park are two drastically geographically different places. So vastly geographically different. Uh, and while the state may be in the southwestern region of states, the state culturally is more southern than southwestern. And geographically, where the people live, more southern than southwestern. Uh, Y'all don't have to believe me, but you just gotta... I mean, you don't have to believe me, but you, I mean, you're just wrong. <laughs> I mean, you just are. Um, but, yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big fucking place. We've got a whole bunch of people, and we're very, very different in the different parts of the state. Um, uh, so there you go. And, and Texas could definitely be multiregional, because it, it, it definitely is. Uh, you know, definitely, uh, culturally speaking... Uh, the people in uh, uh, in in around Houston are much more southern than southwestern. Um, there you go. Uh, moonshine countries in your backyard. Oh yeah. Um, Common ground, common world. 
Um, that is 100%. Not, I'm, like I said, Dustin, we're not going to continue this conversation. <laughs> is whiskey produced at not exceeding 160? That is what whiskey is. That is what whiskey is. No, not true. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and and that that is uh that is the that is probably the distinction. Uh, that separates the corn whiskey and the bourbon is the new charred barrels. And that's the only distinction between the two. Uh, and, and that is where, that is where the delineation between bourbon and corn whiskey goes. But that is the only distinction at that point. And, uh, uh, I was, I was going back through the rules in my head as well. That was the one rule that, about corn whiskey that I had forgotten, uh, was the charred barrels. When, uh, Christi uh, flowers, sunflowers mentioned it, that was, uh, that, that's where it clicked in my mind. But uh, beyond that point where bourbon and corn whiskey are differentiated there, uh, Jack Daniels is still not a bourbon. So all of your, all of your pissing and moaning aside, Jack Daniels is still not bourbon. So there you go. Uh, and if you, if you still just insist that Jack Daniels is bourbon, you're still wrong. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Jack Daniels is still not bourbon, even if bourbon and corn whiskey being cousins are not the same thing. Jack Daniels is still not bourbon. So we're still not going to have the conversation about Jack Daniels being bourbon because it's not. Uh, and we're not going to continue that conversation. <laughs> uh, you don't want to buy drinks with bug burgers? Oh, 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 with the uh, bugs in the drink. Oh, gotcha. Uh, twin bubble airlock. Yeah, I was, I was, I was starting to second guess mine too. When she, when she mentioned that, she jogged my memory and I remember that. Uh, and I will acknowledge that corn whiskey and bourbon, that is the difference between corn whiskey and bourbon, uh, is the new charred oak barrels. You can't, you can't age corn whiskey in new barrels uh, because that is the differentiation right there. But Jack Daniels is still not bourbon. No matter what you say, unless you buy Jack Daniels and decide to start calling it bourbon, it's not a bourbon. And you can, you can talk, of, you can, you can, Cite the law on corn whiskey and bourbon all you want, but Jack Daniels is not a bourbon. Doesn't matter. It's not a bourbon. Um, and that's that's it. It's not. And it's not it's not even it's not even a debatable point. It's 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 a line that whiskey dorks throw out to try and act smart, but it doesn't change the fact that Jack Daniels is a Tennessee whiskey, not a bourbon, because they don't want to call themselves a bourbon, so they're not a bourbon. And there you go. That's it. And people are free to like that gutter water, but I do not. I do not like it, and I won't like it. Unless they make it better. Um, <laughs> I did not blow a smurf for hours. Those guys can't last for more than a couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> um, All right, catch up. I'm almost caught up. Uh, it's 12.42 in chat, 
and it is 12.45 in reality. Um, if you make whiskey from elotes, it can be called Mexican. No, no such thing as Mexican bourbon. No such thing as Mexican bourbon. Uh, just like I can, I can um, take agave syrup and make alcohol, but I can't call it tequila. I think I can call it mezcal, but I can't call it tequila. Uh, put a high ranking. Jack never said any push on it. They will. Technically, it's a bourbon. Technically, technically, legally, it could be called a bourbon, but it's not a fucking bourbon. It's not. They say it's a Tennessee whiskey. It's a Tennessee whiskey. If they want to call it a bunch of cats taped together, they can call it a bunch of cats taped together if that's what they want to call it. Um, there you go. Um, so there you go. But Dustin, when the master distiller wants to put bourbon on the label, then it's a bourbon. But if the master distiller doesn't put bourbon on, well, the ma if the if the marketing department doesn't put bourbon on the label, then it's not bourbon. So there you go. And that will be my last cocktail for the night. I'm going to uh, have some double oak rye uh, for the last cocktail of the night, and we will. You know what? I'm going to. Put you in timeout. <laughs> We're not having the Jack Daniels is bourbon conversation. You're in timeout now. You can come back and I don't know how long timeout lasts. <laughs> I don't know how long timeout lasts, but we're not having the fucking conversation. If they don't want to be called bourbon, they're not bourbon. Then that's it. And and when they would do when if they do want to be called bourbon, they'll be called bourbon, but they're not bourbon uh, unless they choose to be called bourbon. <laughs> 300 seconds. How long is 300 seconds? Is that five minutes? I'm kidding. I'll take you out of timeout. Can I take you out of timeout? Can I take you out of timeout? I can't take you back out of timeout, can I? Oops. <laughs> That's not a reversible decision. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Dustin. <laughs> I can't take you back out of timeout. <laughs> anyway, so we're not going to have that conversation. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, anyway. All right. Well, let's, uh, I guess we can wrap it up. Where are we at? One o'clock? Almost one o'clock. Let's wrap it up. Okay, so... <laughs> Anyway, so looking at the calendar of stuff we got coming up, we have live music returning on the 23rd. Uh, we're also doing a voter registration drive that day, too. Uh, that's going to be fun. Um, tomorrow night we have trivia, which is the 8th. Um, <laughs> we, have, we have trivia on the 8th. Uh, that's tomorrow night. Trivia with uh, Lisa tomorrow night. Uh, and we have our four... Uh, our four bottles that we'll be giving away next week. Uh, the drawing will either be Tuesday or Friday. I'm leaning towards Friday because I still got to finish painting the box. Uh, and I want to make sure that everybody knows the time and everything's scheduled up and everybody's available. So, you know, because you must be present to win. And that's only going to be 30 minutes to an hour anyway well, for the show. But we have four bottles of whiskey plus a cigar from a national, uh, a nationally known tobacconist. Um, um, uh, Christi uh, Sunflowers, uh, Beto is, uh, he's practically neck and neck in the, uh, in the governor's race. I don't know what the polls are saying right now, but he's practically neck and neck, which is pretty fucking remarkable. Um, we, you know, you never quite know what the polls, you never quite know, but, uh, um, I've just, I've heard my first, uh, Greg Abbott campaign ads in the last week. So there's that. Um, we'll see. 
It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. We're going to see. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of time between now and November. Um, <laughs> um, uh, what else do we need to know? What else do we need to know? What else do we need to know? Live music returning on the twenty third. Um, I want to make sure that that Dustin gets out of timeout uh, before I before I sign out because uh, <laughs> it's, it's all good fun. Um, but yeah, trivia is coming back on the tw- uh, tomorrow night. We got trivia the twenty third. Uh, is going to be uh, live music. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll be back next week. I don't know what we're going to talk about next week, but we're going to do something next week and, of course, tomorrow night. And uh, um, yeah, that's it. What would you say there, Dustin? Within the margin, uh, Dustin's back. Well, Dustin's back, but, I mean, on, on the alt account. I want to make sure Dustin's back on the main account, the moderator account. Uh, that I that I put in timeout. I want to make sure it gets back because uh, I can't. I don't want it to be an irreversible. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want it to be an irreversible act, uh, uh, malfunction of the of the glitchy system, whatever. Uh, but let's see here. We're at seven sixty eight now. Uh, onward to our quest for a thousand. We get to a thousand. I'm gonna do the. Uh, I'm gonna shower and get the. Sh- Every time I look at the monitor, it's like ugh. It's just ugh. I hate it. Um. I absolutely hate it. Um. But yeah, Dustin, all in good fun. <laughs> um. Uh. Leave me. Leave me with dealing with the pole. Pole. Worry about their works and not dancing. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is like I said before. I hate I, I hate blue dye. I hate having my fingers stained with blue ink. I hate it when, but of course this when I put I, I've already put it on once and washed it off. Oh look at that. That that. That's not bad. The blue goatee. That's not. Maybe I'll just shave this off and keep the goatee. Or maybe I'll. Oh, maybe I'll just keep the. Maybe I'll shave off the mustache and just keep the beard part. Maybe. Now nah, we'll see. Um. <laughs> um. But anyway. Um. I don't know what I was talking about. What was I talking about? Doesn't matter. Doesn't fucking matter. Uh. But I'll be back in the shop tomorrow. And Friday, uh, I've got work to do at the shop. We've got our bourbon and barrels. We've got uh, labels that are being approved. We've got a whole bunch of moving parts that are going between now and... Uh... <laughs> we got a whole bunch of moving parts. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, we got a whole bunch of moving parts going between now and the 23rd. Uh, I've got a bathroom that's going to be built. Finally, in my distillery, I'm going to have a bathroom, a place where I can poop indoors. Uh, that'll be awesome. Uh... <laughs> Um, but, and our, our bourbons and barrels, we have another set of barrels that'll be coming in the next, uh, uh, four weeks and a fresh batch of bourbon going into the, the barrels. Um, oh, we're just going to have a good damn time. Uh, and Friday night, unfortunately, Bacon, I will not be able to join you this Friday night because this Friday night I'm going to be traveling. Uh, we've got another, um, another anniversary weekend. Uh, we, we went to the comedy show last week. We got a, a little anniversary camp out that we're going this week. Uh, well, it's not just me pooping indoors. Uh, when we have guests, they can poop indoors too. And I don't have to have a porta pot out in the back, uh, to do stuff. Well, the, st- the streams of me working will be more fun. Those streams of me, of me working, I'm actually trying to take the six hours of footage and boil it down into 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, and I want to do more of that and get more of that on the channel uh, with the voiceover of the day, you know, all in a day's work type of stuff uh, so that we can have more, uh, more distillery-focused uh, videos, long form videos that can get more views and more, um, more, 
uh, more lifetime engagement videos. Uh, something that shorts, uh, something that falls in between shorts and live streams. You know, the long form live streams and shorts. Something that falls inside that uh, inside that ecosphere of of what really uh, grabs and connects with YouTube viewers. Those 15, 10 to 15 minute long videos that are uh, uh, right in the wheelhouse of people who can uh, spend, you know, they got their lunch break. They want to watch uh, two or three videos on their lunch break, and that's about it. Um, uh, for as long as it took me to start building a bathroom at the distillery. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I haven't needed a bathroom at the distillery. Because uh, if we're not open to the public, we don't need a bathroom. Um because, you know, it's just me. If it's just me working there, I can always go to the store uh, around the corner. I can head home. At 15, I'm only 15 minutes away from home. Uh, you know, if I got to, you know, if I got to use a tree, I can go use a tree. The woods are right around the corner. Um. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I've got the, I've got the woods right around the corner. I can just go right over there. The, the, the biggest challenge is if I have to do something more involved than just taking a leak, that allows, that means I've got to, uh, I've got to schedule my day a little bit more, uh, a little bit more creatively. You know, I can't just get up and go to the distillery at six in the morning and then get back up and go back home, uh, to take care of things. But thankfully, this is probably too much information. Thankfully, I'm very regular, so. Um, uh, so there you go more information than you need to know but that's how things go um, so uh, there we go I think we're good I think we're good I think it's time to I think it's time to wrap it up what it's what one o'clock yeah it's one o'clock it's time to wrap it up final drink ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters children of all ages um Go this way. Dustin's back. There you go. We made you, we got you back. Thank you for testing and confirming that you are back. Uh, think with your whole brain. Love with your whole heart. Uh, be awesome to each other. And of course, until next time. I don't want to tap the uh, camera too hard because then it'll knock it off and then you'll see the ceiling. Until next time. And in the meantime, I am the old humble guy, your friendly neighborhood sin merchant. Be awesome like I said, to each other. And thank you all for your support. Uh, 768 is a big number. Uh, this t Literally, this time last year, I was somewhere in the 400 range uh, promoting the channel. Three, 400 range promoting the channel, saying, hey, let's get us up to 1,000 by the end of the year, uh, which was a ridiculous goal and not going to happen. But this year, it actually looks like it may happen. We may hit, we may pop this up another 250 uh uh, 250 subscribers by the end of the year. We're getting that. We're actually having people watching the channel and views and getting engagement with our audience. So um, we'll see where the winds take us. Be awesome to each other, guys. Thank you again, uh, and uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you at the distillery. Bye now. Where's that? Uh, is it this one? Where's the? This one. There it is. Bye. <laughs>